want to find the Geo Archon, this is the only chance you'll get all year. Guess it's a good thing Venti brought it up earlier. Otherwise, we definitely would have missed this year's Rite of Dissension. Well, Venti brought up the time, but Baimon... knows nothing about where it is. <laughs> Look, we're already in Liyue, so let's go ask some of the locals. Oh, right. About the Geo Archon Morax. Did you know the Mora that we use is named after this guy? But it's seen as impolite for people from outside Liyue to refer to the Geo Archon by that name. So we should refer to the Geo Archon by the name Rex Lapis, like the people of Liyue do. Rite of Dissension. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Isn't that today? Once a year, Rex Lapis bestows upon us his divine prediction, guiding us on how to run Liu for the coming year. Last year it was the Yuhang of the Liu at Qixing that was given the honor of asking for the divine prediction. Foreigners always say, but true control over Liyue will always be held by Rex Lapis. The Qixing is comprised of mere mortals. Rex Lapis is a god. Mondstadt's god is nowhere to be seen, whilst our god is forever with us. Stay in Liyue long enough and you'll see. Given that you just left your godless city, it's time you experienced what it's like to be in a city whose god has walked with it through all of history. <sighs> another year, another rite of dissension. Good news for some, gloom and doom for others. <sighs> Nothing to do with me. Oh, are you also foreigners here for the rite of dissension? <sighs> to think I've lived in Liyue all these years and never come to see this before. I guess it's like they say, locals never visit the tourist spots. Ah, I wish you well on your travels. Li Yu always welcomes you. You too wish to bear witness to the right of dissension? <laughs> Me too. We all do. As a businessman myself, how could I not take interest in Liyue's most important business trends? The 17 predictions given last year made more than a few ripples throughout the industry. Hmm. What's more, there's been a rumor going around that the Tianxue herself, Ning Guang, has been acting secretly in the shadows. She wants the rocks created by GeoVision holders to be exempt from taxation. Wow, that's some super professional legal stuff, that is! <laughs> to be on the pulse of the predictions and the market is what makes this harbor what it is. Among the seven, Rex Lapis is the oldest deity. His keen sense of strategy is well trusted among his people. Understanding the predictions as soon as possible can make all the difference in making your fortune. F fortune So where can we see this Rite of Dissension anyway? Hmm... You're not at all close. Not to mention that if I gave you directions, as foreigners you'd get lost along the way. 
So better to head to Yujing Terrace, to the high ground. It's the highest place in the harbor. Sounds like the best place for trying to communicate with deities, no? My husband's gone to take part too. Says he wants to bear witness to this year in history. <sighs> How come he gets to go and have fun while I have to watch the shop? Well, today's an important day in Liu. You should get yourself up to Yujing Terrace and get involved. You also want a little Adepti luck, too? <laughs> Seems you know a lot. Making a wish during this time is sure to get you the blessings of both the Adepti and Rex Lapis himself. I've already made my wish, so you can take this. Great! Thanks! May your wealth multiply in the year ahead. Your first time in Liyue? Actually, it's my first time to see the Rite of Dissension, too. Ah, look, that's Miss Ningguang of the Liyue Shixing. Only those who have control in Liyue can preside over the Rite of Dissension. Oh yeah, not sure if you knew, but most of the Adepti appear in the form of various beasts. I heard that when attending these kinds of formal occasions, Rex Lapis himself appears as a celestial cross between two of Liu's ancient mythical creatures. Ah, sorry, I shouldn't interrupt your wish. Please, take this. gonna take. Even for outsiders, the grandeur and solemnity of the proceedings and ceremony leaves a deep impression. upon us.
Lapis has been killed. Seal the exits. to run hey buddy hold still stop huh. stop come with me child child what so we're supposed to dote on you <laughs> no no not at all it's an alias of sorts in Mondstadt I don't suppose you came across a senora by any chance senora child <gasps> you're Fatui one of the harbingers oh no don't worry I'm not looking for a fight Senora gave you quite the bad impression, huh? Pfft, that woman. Can't say I'm a fan either. Right. Let's forget all about her, shall we? I'm here to help you. Yes, help. I'm not a bad guy. Oh, okay, perhaps I'm kind of a bad guy, but I'm not here to give you any trouble. Would it be too much to ask for you to keep the sword sheathed? <sighs> I thank you for your knightly nobility. I heard of your deeds in Mondstadt, so I couldn't help but notice you during the proceedings back there. And because I had my eye on you the whole time, I know it wasn't you. Someone else was clearly behind it. But, regrettably, given I'm a Fatui envoy from Snezhnaya, there's no way I'd be trusted after something of this magnitude. The ruling Qi Sing of Liyue has always been overly suspicious of us. Well, 
can you honestly blame them? <laughs> Guess I shouldn't try to deny that. Okay, sure. Maintaining a distance between strangers is probably a good idea. Either way, I'm already used to it at this stage. But right now, if you want to clear yourselves of any suspicion, you need to get yourselves to Northland Bank. Staying here isn't an option. As the old Liyue saying goes, the walls have ears. What should I put in my letter? Northland Bank. Correct. This bank was opened here in Liyue by Snezhnaya. Though everyone knows Liyue is the most enterprising in Tevat, Snezhnaya is not short of change either. Yeah, well, poorer nations don't seem the type to have diplomats that come around acting the way yours do towards the Knights of Favonius. <laughs> here, let me give you this. This is a... I'm not sure exactly. Sometimes all money can buy is things, and not a name for oneself. All I know is that it's a sigil. A sigil to keep the mighty and illuminated Adepti from bringing harm to you. Adepti? If you head north from the harbor, then west from Guayli Plains, you will eventually reach a stone forest known as Jueyun Karst. The people of Liyue believe it to be the abode of the Adepti. Legend or not, they believe it. As such, offerings to the Adepti are made at its borders. Nobody dares venture in. But I have no need for believing, not when I know for a fact that the Adepti truly exist. Hate to admit it, but your Fatui intel seems alright. But why would we go looking for Adepti anyway? <laughs> oh, my little friend. There are plenty of reasons mortals seek the blessings of Adepti. Money, health, love, but you, you will go for justice. Justice? The Chi Sing will already have dispatched the Millilith. They'll be seeking out the assassin from amongst the onlookers. But how could a mere mortal kill a god that can sweep aside entire armies? Rex Lapis never gave up his power as a god. This level of crude response is beyond what is called for. How suspicious. Your thinking is even more radical than my own, honorary knight. Even now, the Northland Bank wouldn't be able to hold the Millilith off for long, but the Adepti can clear you of any wrongdoing. Liyue was founded by the Geo Archon and the Adepti. Of course, it was built by force. Look for them, and be faster than the Chi Sing's messengers, so you may give your version of events first. If there is anyone that can help you in Liyue now, it can only be the mighty and illuminated Adepti. And who might we be? Those that dare enter Dreyun Karst. A sigil of permission. Many a season has passed since one was last in the presence of such an item. He before you is the mighty and illuminated Adeptus. Moon Carver.
Speak, traveler. What business have you here? Actually... It's the assassin! They dared to flee here to Juryun Karst. Uh, sir, we've already stepped too far into Juryun Karst ourselves. We... Ah, there's no choice. Apprehending the assassin is top priority. We must press on. Disturbing our borders. See them gone. One will not have interruption. Two arms! <laughs> You're toast! Quick! Preposterous. Preposterous! The Liyue Qixin. Utterly disappointing. How could someone possibly assassinate Rex Lapis during the Rite of Dissension? And then place suspicion upon the attendees! Traveler, of the unjust accusations placed upon you, one has become aware. The mind knows its answer. Though one must consult with one's fellows, lest the mind be misguided. Go, take your sigil of permission. Carry with you a message. Mountain Shaper and Cloud Retainer can be found here. Only fate will decide if you shall find them. Only fate. There exists a conqueror of demons, a guardian Yaksha. Go to Wangshu Inn. There you shall seek him. Rescued me? Oh, thank you. Oh, and have you seen my brother? His name is Li Ding. We were climbing the mountain together. But then I... Well, I don't know. Did I get swallowed up by the Amber? I think I must have been knocked out. I just hope he didn't get trapped in Amber too. All right then. I won't bother you anymore. Thanks again. I'm going to find my brother now. I really hope he's okay. My brother told me everything. Thank you both so much for rescuing him. <sighs> Our family has nothing to live on. We heard tell of treasures hidden in the amber of Mount Hulao. And with nowhere else to turn, we came looking for them. <sighs> we weren't thinking straight. We thought that we could sneak up into the mountain and grab just enough treasure to sell and support our family with. As you can see, the Adeptus punished us for our greed. The Amber swallowed me up, but if you hadn't come to my rescue, who knows when I would have gotten out. Luckily, the Adeptus was merciful. They sent you two as their messengers to save us. Yes! You two saved my brother just as I was praying for the Adeptus's forgiveness. Right here on top of the mountain. Mm. You are Adepti Messengers, no doubt about it. 
We are truly blessed to receive the mercy of the Adeptus. We promise that we will change our ways and make an honest living from now on, even if it means sweating it out down at the docks. Anyway, we have trespassed in the realm of this Adeptus long enough. We should get going. Thank you, mighty Adepti messengers. Yes, thank you. Super helpful if we actually were Adepti messengers. Cause it seems like this Adeptus has got a real temper problem. But it's not like we've done anything wrong, so... Oh. Who dares trespass on my mountain? Foolish mortal. Come forth and receive your punishment. You intrude upon the sanctity of Mount Hulao. You destroy the amber of my mountain. And you free a thief whose freedom is not yours to give. The thieves' ignorance was an affront to the Adepti. But your actions are an abomination of the highest order. Wait! We can explain! Mooncarver? Trusted a mere mortal as his messenger? Is this a sigil of permission? One is surprised to find such things still exist in the mortal realm. In the beginning, Rex Lapis cast them for the mortals with his own hand. Few were made then, and thousands of years on, fewer still remain. Speak. One shall listen to the matter which brings you here. Then one shall verify the truth thereof. You would be wise to speak the truth. For Liyue is not so far from here that one would be easily deceived. Rex Lapis... assassinated? At the right of dissension? What mortal in Liyue, nay in all the world, would conspire to commit such foul treason? Or perhaps the more pertinent question is, what power in this world could aspire to achieve it? Rex Lapis charged the Adepti with the protection of Liyue, and we have always honored this duty. As the people have prospered, so have we gradually withdrawn into the mountains. Indeed, this was a gesture of goodwill towards humanity. But now, alas, Rex Lapis, gone. Traveler, of the matter you have relayed, one has become aware. One now knows why Moon Carver has sent for us. Once one has dealt with certain matters here that require my attention, one shall convene with the other Adepti. Adepti always have magical powers in storybooks. Seems it's true in real life, too. You know, like how grass is actually Adepti hair, and rivers are actually Adepti saliva. There must be something similar going on with the Amber. Your nonsense knows no bounds. This amber is produced by a flower that one has planted here, called the Karst Crawler. The majority of the plant is hidden underground. When stepped on, it produces amber to trap the invader. After taking up residence here, one planted many Karst Crawlers to ensure that the tranquility of the mountain would remain undisturbed. Over the years, they have helped to prevent many disturbances. But in the process, 
They have also trapped many curious things. Oh, so the Amber is alive? Correct. Thus, one may not leave this place in its current state, for fear of the risk to innocent lives in one's absence. One will depart as soon as one has attended to this matter. One trusts that the manner of your departure will be swifter in nature. organized person. Someone has definitely cooked here before. Do you think they were making an offering? Looks like they didn't use all the ingredients. Let's see here. We got some snapdragon, some lotus heads, some tofu... Whatever they were cooking, it sounds complicated. Hey, look over there! They left some notes, too! Yup. It's a doozy. Paimon's not surprised they had to write it all down. It's a lot to remember. We should read it carefully. made of flour and meat. Huh? Our messy chef dropped a piece of paper on the floor. Ew! And there's a huge footprint on it, too. But footprint aside, maybe it has something to do with this mystery dish.
One senses the presence of a sigil of permission. One knows not why you have come, though the sincerity of your offering is clear. Hence, you shall be granted an opportunity. Find your way to mine abode, and you shall receive an audience with the Adeptus whom you seek. One is most impressed. The path that leads through this abode defies those of ordinary abilities. The one before you is the Adeptus Cloud Retainer. Now speak of the matter which brings you here. You surmise correctly. In fact, even Gui Zhang and Rex Lapis themselves found one's technological accomplishments to be worthy of commendation. This place is huge, and there are so many mechanisms! Do you really have this whole place to yourself? What's it even for? Did you build it as your private mechanism workshop or something? It's just like the stories say. The Adepti leave the human world, find somewhere to go be a hermit, and then they research and invent all these amazing things! One is simply not partial to the tedium of social interaction, and wish to find some peace and quiet. Find it one did. Shortly after which, you arrived bearing your sigil of permission. But enough. State the matter which brings you here at once. You have disturbed the tranquility of this place for long enough. Rex Lapis. Assassinated? How can this be? Such a heinous crime! Who would dare? The notion is so preposterous as to be unbelievable! One shall have to verify the truth of the matter independently. 
Perhaps one shall quash Liyue first, then convene with the other Adepti. Wait, what? Did you just say squash Liyue Harbor? Are you seriously gonna wipe out the whole city? Only a response of sufficient magnitude can negate the possibility of further incidents. It is as you say, but if Rex Lapis has indeed been murdered, then Liu is in great peril. To delay in quashing the threat is to invite further disaster. It is precisely because one does not wish to see further suffering that exceptional measures are deemed necessary at this exceptional time. Yikes! Quick, you gotta think of something. She wants to squash Liyue flat, and it doesn't seem like she's bluffing. Exactly what Paimon was gonna say. We made all that delicious food and gave every last bit of it to you. We were hoping you might help Liyue out, not wipe Liyue out. Or at least let's, you know, discuss it first. Can't hurt for you to get a second opinion. Contract? A cruel irony that you should appeal to the notion after the merciless murder of the God of Contracts himself. The people of Liyue seem quite content to dispense with their contracts. They are quite adept at taking that which is composed of black and white and turning it gray. Nevertheless, since you come here in the name of contracts, far be it from one to abandon one's own contractual obligations. Least of all when you come bearing a sigil of permission. Rex Lapis infused these sigils with adeptal power when he first cast them. That power once aided humans in battle. Most of the sigil's power has long since worn off. It is but a keepsake now. This keepsake cannot be taken as proof of your trustworthiness. One must investigate the claims that you make independently. This, no doubt, is Mooncarver's very reason for summoning us. Your audience with the Adeptus before you is now concluded. Leave at once. Oh, this seems to be Wang Shu in. Compared to Joy and Cars, this place seems basic. Are we really going to find an Adeptus here? Let's take a look. Paimon reckons he'll be on the balcony. <laughs> Doubt we're going to find him in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's not here? <sighs> to the blind, <laughs> everything may not be as it appears. Sigil of permission? You came prepared. Though this only prevents me from hurting you myself. Doesn't stop you from getting hurt in other ways. Uh... Paimon doesn't get it. Too much contact with our world is breaking the rules. Mortal souls are not as robust as those of Adepti, nor can your blood carry this level of Adeptal energy. It's for your own good. Leave. Now. to give him an ugly nickname. But if you tick off an Adeptus, the only thing you'll probably ever find in treasure chests is cabbages. Blech. <sighs> Guess we should go ask the boss lady of the inn about just how she manages to talk to Adepti.
I can't wait any longer! Oh, you've already met Xiao. Not bad. Not often he's in a good enough mood to agree to see people. That's his good mood? Oh yes, the Adepti are very hard to come by. Many people go their whole lives praying to them, never once actually getting to see one. When the Geo Archon built Liyue, he borrowed power from the Adepti. But most of them only know how to protect Liyue by fighting. So for many millennia, it has instead been humans who have led Liyue. You really know a lot, huh, boss lady? <laughs> it's not boss lady, it's just boss. Anyway, seeing as you have the favor of the Adepti, Things should be a lot easier. Well, if you want to know my opinion, if you keep Xiao in a good mood, things should be okay. Good mood? Can't really imagine what a good mood looks like for that vigilant Yaksha. <laughs> Will be interesting, won't it? Come to think of it, I've never seen him smile either. How about this? You go see the chef for a bowl of almond tofu and a plate of whatever it is you're best at making. Almond tofu is one of the few human foods Xiao likes. The other dish is up to you. Up to us, eh? Hmm, what do you think you're the best at cooking? Really hard to screw that one up, right? Can't you see him on a break, kid? Scram! Scram! Whoa, this chef guy's service is about as good as that Wagner guy's back in Mondstadt. <sighs> I see. If it's for the boss, then guess I don't have a choice now, do I? But my heart's not really in it right now. Not enough to make a dessert as painstaking as almond tofu. A fencer's hand must be steady. So too must the hand of a chef. But my hands... I'm... They're not steady. Because, uh, a, a traveler once told me that this inn... is haunted. And then just now, just now, in the kitchen, I saw something. Something not right. This chef looks so intimidating, but speak of ghosts and he becomes weak. I keep thinking. Even Wang Shu In isn't safe. Uh, I can't keep a steady hand for something like almond tofu. All right, in the name of high quality almond tofu, we need to go check this kitchen out. <laughs> The bosses hadn't been so good to me, there's no way I'd be putting up with this. <sighs> Doesn't seem to be anything. Too. There really is a ghost! What? How could I... Oh. Okay, so he's useless now. What do we do? Forget it, let's just go see the boss lady again. May the... the Geo Lord protect you. May all the deities protect you. <laughs> Scared of something so insignificant. Hard to believe he was once a notorious bandit. You don't seem that afraid of ghosts, boss lady. Gods and ghosts. I've seen it all before. Come to think of it, others don't seem to know there's an Adeptus here at the inn except for the boss lady. Shh. 
say any more and you'll be divulging my little secret. Right. Best you two be off. Go see to it that that little ghost doesn't go scaring anybody else. Not that I'm ordering you around. It's like the Adeptus said. Mortal souls are not as robust as those of the Adepti. So as not to be harmed when dealing with the Adepti, you can start by practicing with that ghost. But how should we persuade the ghost? There is a calligraphy painting in the inn known as the Witness Sigil. It's been in circulation for over a thousand years. Go take a look at it. Once you have, look for a place outside where you can see the exact same Witness Sigil formation. What? You... you really got the ghost to promise to stop haunting the inn? <laughs> wow. You really are something. I am in your debt. Please, wait a moment. I'll make you the smoothest, silkiest bowl of almond tofu. <laughs> My hands are steadier than ever now that she's gone. Again. Wait, don't go disappearing again. What's this? It's your favorite almond tofu, as well as this distant traveler's best dish, a satisfying salad. Quick, tell him everything before he finishes eating. Rex Lapis. How could this be? I... can't imagine it. Though times have changed, I've never imagined a Leoa without him. 
the ruling Qixing. Just what role have they played in this? <sighs> I will seek Moon Carver, Mountain Shaper, and Cloud Retainer. It is time they too made their decisions. Adepti do not turn on their responsibilities. I have my reasons to not want to be tainted by the mortal realm, but... Responsibilities are responsibilities. Our god is the god of contracts, after all. Wait! Paimon still has one last question! Hmm? That... dusky Ming... she's... When conquering demons, on occasion, you can come across spirits who have never hurt anyone, yet are also not yet able to be moved on. So I asked the innkeeper and the boss if they could keep her here for a time. So really? Wang Xuin was looking after her! Really keeping a wide range of business going, huh? You finally returned. How was your journey to Jueyun Karst? I see. Huh. Moon Carver, Mountain Shaper, Cloud Retainer, Conqueror of Demons. Some of these names have never come up in the intel the Fatui gets hold of. As a returning gift, I too have information for you. Regarding the Archon's passing, the Liyue Qixing's response really has given me food for thought. They've announced that, as the true killer has not yet been found, they are not allowing anyone to pay their respects to the Exuvia. They've even gone so far as to try and cut off information. But with the right of dissension and all, even the Qixing isn't able to keep a lid on things. Exuvia? It's common knowledge in Liyue that Rex Lapis is also an Adeptus. The Geo Archon is also the god of contracts, and is also known as the Exuvia, prime of the Adepti. The mighty and illuminated Adepti of today all signed contracts to protect Liyue way back then. Guess that explains why they're all so focused on Liyue's well-being. Naturally, they both have the responsibility and the aptitude for the job. If the ruling Qixing became unable to perform their duty properly, the Adepti have the right to take corrective action. The Geo Archon's spirit has risen, so why would the Qixing hide his vessel? Truly suspicious. Oh, right! He's the whole reason we came here! If the Liyue Qixing has locked up Exuvia and won't let anyone near... ...then our quest to find the Seven is already over! Oh? You're trying to find the Seven? And just why might that be, pray tell? <laughs> nice answer. A knight that gets duped by the Fatui would really be no knight at all now, would they? But I can help you with that too, you know? Hmm. Really? Give me some time. Time to find someone. Someone who can help you break through this stalemate. Huh. <laughs> Truly fascinating. The harder they try to silence the situation, the greater the chaos that erupts. <laughs> if you want to be around to see it all come crashing down, best you stay alive until we next meet, yes? Welcome, friend of child, and congratulations on the first day of your illustrious career with the Fatui. You sound remarkably sure of yourself. Remember, we are mere mortals. Our ideas are fluid like water. Only the Tsaritsa truly has a will as solid as the permafrost. But back to the matter at hand. Child tells me that he has upheld his end of your agreement. What agreement? Oh, the thing about...
about him helping us find a guy? Correct. Child promised he would find someone to break the stalemate. And the Harbingers do not break their promises lightly. Ah, where is that guy anyway? Child is currently at Leoli Pavilion. Oh, oh, Paimon knows this one! Ahem. There are two styles of cooking in Liyue, known as Li style and Yue style. They have been competing for centuries, but neither has emerged as the clear winner. The flagship restaurant of the Li style is the Li Li Pavilion. The owner especially chose to open the restaurant at Feiyuan Slope so they could compete face to face with the Xinyue Kiosk, which is the flagship restaurant of the Yue style. Don't talk to Paimon like that! Anyway, Paimon's hungry! Let's get moving! Aha, you made it! As promised, I have found someone who can help you. Someone who can solve the mystery of why the Liyue Chising would hide the Geo Archon's vessel. So, where is he? In Liyue Pavilion? He certainly is. Come, I'll introduce you. I took the liberty of setting up a business dinner, as per the Liyue custom. Welcome back, sir. You honor us with your patronage. Mr. Zhongli is awaiting your arrival in the room you booked. <sighs> Hi. Allow me to introduce Mr. Zhong Li, consultant to an organization known as Wang Sheng, and a trusted associate of the Fatui. Indeed, Wang Sheng's line of work can be sensitive at times. Let's just say they understand when discretion is needed. And we, the Fatui, have always been glad to do business with friends who walk in the shadows. Walk in the shadows? It is an honor to meet you. I have heard tell of you from Mondstadt. Discretion? Shadows? <sighs> Is Wangshan some kind of business involving... dealing with people? Indeed. It is as you have guessed. <sighs> the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor organizes burials. We ensure that those who pass on do so in peace. Huh? <laughs> Did you think he was some sort of hired killer? The Fatui calls many such people friends, but the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor does not dabble in such business. Well, ostensibly. Well, they are still... Uh, I shouldn't say too much. In any case, I brought you to meet Mr. Zhang Li because... Because I can bring you to see Rex Lapis's vessel. What? <laughs> Don't be so surprised. Sure, the Geo Archon's body has been squirreled away by order of the Tian Chuan Ning Guang. But first, let's hear what Mr. Zhang Li has to say, shall we? Rex Lapis may be the prime of Adepti, but he is ultimately an Adeptus. Many Adepti have left us over the millennia. This is the inexorable trend. The times have changed. You must have felt it too when you were at Jueyun Karst. As you have seen, the time of the Adepti is ending, and the time of mankind is slowly dawning. In years past, Liu's tradition was that a huge memorial service be held to mark the passing of every Adeptus. But this time, the Qixing have made no attempt whatsoever to respect this tradition. 
It is sacrilege. Yeah, the killer hasn't even been caught yet. Deicide or not, the concern of the Wangsheng funeral parlor is this. When the ritual to receive this god is so kingly, it is all the more egregious for his final send-off to go unattended to. Traveler, child has told me a lot about you. Since you have had dealings with the Animo Archon, could I ask you to help me prepare the Geo Archon's last rites? A wise decision. The Tianchuan Ningguang has forbidden anyone from accessing Rex Lapis's vessel, which of course you would need to access if you were to achieve your goal of meeting all of the Seven. Precisely. Only by participating in the Rite of Parting will you be able to see the form of Rex Lapis again. If we are agreed, come with me. We will speak of the details as we walk. All right, my bridge building work here is done. Turned out well, didn't it? You can go if you want to. Don't worry about me. I might just have a few more drinks and get acquainted with these things they call chopsticks in the meantime. My chopsticks truly are difficult to use. After having experienced the land of the Absentee Archon, Traveler, how does it feel to know that our Archon and Adepti are here all around you in Liyue? Indeed, the weight of 3,700 years worth of history runs deepest in the true divinity of Liyue. Organizing the Rite of Parting should prove to be an enlightening part of your travels. Liyue is the most prosperous of the Seven Nations, defended by deities and ruled by the Qixing. As such, the diplomatic maneuverings of the Fatui have gained no purchase here. Ningguang of the Qixing has always been on her guard against the Fatui. That is in all likelihood why Child wants to make use of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor's connections. Huh. What would Child get out of us? doing the rite of parting anyway. I neither know nor do I wish to know. As far as I am concerned, the Fatui are merely financial sponsors. I only wish for Liyue's traditions to endure. These are the advanced funds that Child has provided. If you use them up, you can go to him to apply for any subsequent funding. Wow! Well then, let us be off. The first step in our preparations shall be to obtain some prize Noctilucus Jade worthy of a deity. Welcome to the Jade Mystery, my good friends. Would you like to try your luck betting on Jade? This could be your lucky day. It's cheap and it's fun, and who knows, you just might strike it rich. Betting? No, no, we're here for... Um... What was it again? Nocta Lucas Jade, of radiant grade at the very least. Radiant grade, Nocta Lucas Jade? I see. You're not a tourist. My apologies. I have some here for your perusal. What do you think? The Jade Mystery is an old name in the Jade business. Just look at that wonderful quality. Rex Lapis doesn't often bless us with such finery. Go on, pick whichever one you like. These three pieces really do look pretty. Not like the ones you usually dig up. But how do we pick? Should we just grab one and go? 
Oh? You want me to decide? That is fine as well. If it were me, the answer would be simple. Oh? And that would be... I'll take them all, boss. Oh, you act with such panache, good sir. I always knew you were not a man of ordinary caliber. Oh, wait, wait, boss! That one didn't count! We need to discuss it again! Hey! If we only need one for the ritual, aren't we wasting three times the more if we buy them all? Oh, Mora. Hmm. It is as you say. I suppose I overlooked this particular aspect of the transaction. Huh? How do you not think about Mora when buying things? If one must always consider Mora before acting, then in all things one is bound by Mora. Uh, what? All Mora is currency. But not all currency is Mora. What? So loaded that he doesn't even bother hunting for a bargain. No need to waver. Even when I am constrained by Mora, I have ways of working around my limitations. Evaluating the quality of Noctilucus Jade is indeed very tricky. As crude ore, there is little difference in texture, lustrousness, and internal pattern between good and bad jade. Only after the item made using Noctilucus Jade has taken shape will you be able to see whether it is up to par or not. If you return to those crafty merchants to quibble, they will counter by saying that your crafting bench is to blame, or that your heat control was poor. To think it's that easy to get cheated. But there is a way to truly evaluate this jade. And a true insider would know it. A fool sees the pointer and misses the moon. What does that mean? If you point at the moon with your finger, a wise man knows that you are pointing at the moon, while a fool will only see the finger. The patterns. The facade. These are all the finger. Noctilucus Jade is a mystical stone used to light up the darkness, and so its brightness is the important thing. It is the moon. Noctilucus Jade of excellent quality would have superior pyro affinity. In other words, the bluer and brighter the luster of the ore under high temperature, the higher its quality. I have imparted the priceless secrets of the Jade Trade to you. Now, all that's left is to put it into practice. Priceless, huh? Hyman's just said that we might never be able to use it again. We're back to buy some rocks, boss. But can you let us burn them first? Burn them? You can't do that, my friends. If you were to do so, what would I have to sell? That would... well... fine. As you wish, then. How about this? I can take a small sample of all three. I'll take a bit of a loss. Uh, we'll count it as a friendly gesture. <laughs> Don't worry. I know the rules. As long as we can prove that it is good jade, you will not take a loss. All right, take these as samples. I've carved them off with a knife and tagged them to boot. Aren't these too thin? Even paper's thicker. No, even a bug's wings are thicker. These are almost see-through. <laughs> oh, you flatter me, but I have to be gentle with these rocks. They are my pride and joy. If I'd taken off even a bit more, it, <laughs> it would have killed me. But wouldn't something this thin go poof if we held it to the fire? It can't be helped. 
Trying to deprive a merchant of his profits would be like forcing a ravenous wolf to vomit up the food in its stomach. Nonetheless, under the right conditions, these thin slices will serve. What sort of conditions? While we add the high temperatures using pyro, we can use hydro to reinforce it from within. This way, the samples will not disintegrate immediately. Oh! <laughs> oh, sir, to think you were this learned. Thank you for your understanding. Strictly speaking, asking for samples when we have not yet agreed to purchase the goods is unfair. Trade in Liyue must be based upon fairness. Well, guess we just need to find a place to try this out. Oh, Paimon remembers! We once saw this big pot down at the Data Upa Gorge in the camp of the Hilly Churls from the Meaty Tribe. It's real sturdy and should be able to take the elemental reactions. Now, let's pack those samples up and make a move! It has been a long time since I last set foot in the Nation of Wind. A friend of mine from Mondstadt would always bring a few bottles of locally brewed dandelion wine whenever he came to visit me in Liyue. It must be said that the famed liquor of the land of pastorals is far better than Sumeru's frigid snake wine. That's the pot! <sighs> it looks like the hilly trolls are still using it! It's a bit impolite, but we gotta cut the line! Let's fire it up and begin our experiment! We're ready to go! Paimon will help remember which one of the three is which. Use Pyro to keep making the pot hotter until we get the results we need. Mr. Zhongli said that the shinier and bluer the orchids, the better it is, so pay close attention.
You're back, my friends. I've kept the goods for you. Which of them would you like? Exactly. That's the one Paimon remembers, too. No problem. If you have your eye on this one, you can have it. Then we'll take a box of the third type of jade. Done. All the same, uh, pardon me for asking, but I'm curious. Whatever do you need this much top quality Noctilucus jade for? Hmm. I suppose it would not hurt to tell you. We need them to make implements for the rite of parting. Parting? Oh, dear. I I'd heard the rumors, but had given much thought to them. This... This means that Rex Lapis really is... Oh, it's hard to believe. Even though the Jade Mystery has been in decline, we have always been under his protection. It is said that when our Lord lost his way while going incognito in the city 200 years ago, it was a spoon from the Jade Mystery that he had used to sample the local delights. Alas, alas, all things must pass. <sighs> well, if this is to be used to say farewell to Rex Lapis, then I shall sell this to you at half the price. Are you sure? You didn't want to even give us an inch before. If not for our Lord's protection, this city wouldn't exist as it does now. No proprietor could earn money off such a thing. Oh, I'm sure Rex Lapis will feel your sentiment, boss. In the safe hands of the Liu Achising and good honest merchants such as yourself, I for one believe that Liu Er will continue to prosper as it always has done. All right. Thank you, my friends. What's with me getting all sentimental like this? I'll practically be giving away all my fortune at this rate. Now that we've made our choice, let's take this Noctilucus Jade back. Hey, wait a minute! He said it was half price, not that we could leave without paying. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I must have forgotten to do that, too. Let me see. As I thought, I didn't bring any. Any what? Mora, my apologies. Another oversight on my part. Oh, that won't do. This isn't some small sum. Oh, wait! Didn't Child give us some advanced funds earlier? <sighs> That's a relief. Have a look. It's fine. Just enough for half price. <laughs> Though, to be honest, it'd be all right even if the sum wasn't quite enough. Well, it's settled then. Let's take this jade to Eugene Terrace. That's where we plan to hold the right. Look at you bossing everyone around. You didn't cough up a single mora. <laughs> I will do my best. You have my thanks. We can leave the jade here. I have already called for a jewelsmith to shape them into the implements that we will need. Ah, yes. I have yet to go and see Child. So, as for the jewelsmith's remuneration... Guess we can't do anything else. Also, is this where we're doing the rite of parting? Yes. I have already rented this location, and have begun making preparations for the rite. The Liu Achising have agreed to this arrangement. But when something this big happened here, should suspects like us really be at the crime scene? We might get caught by the Millilith. 
Although with that said, since we got back from Dway and Karst, none of those pesky Millilith soldiers have come chasing after us. I wonder what that's about. Also, the... uh... Rex Lapis Vessel... Traditionally, we call it the Exuvia. Ah, right! That's what it was called. You seem to know everything, Mr. Zhongli. Um, so, was this Exuvia hidden away by the Chi-Sing? I mean, we haven't even figured out who the murderer is. One must think that they already have someone in mind. Or perhaps they already know. Surely they must have found all the evidence that there is to find here. These things are for the authorities in Yujing Terrace to consider. Trying to help would probably only add to their troubles. Before the rite is conducted, the Exuvia will be kept temporarily in the Golden House. Golden House? The only mint in Liyue, which is to say the only mint into that. All the mora that flows throughout the world is minted there. No, Paimon wasn't thinking about anything bad. Paimon thinks it suits Morax. But why do you know this, Mr. Zhongli? Since the rite of parting has the approval of the Qixing, it is a semi-official event. As such, there is already some limited information available. Perhaps each has their motives. But this is the capital of commerce. A little exploitation once in a while is not unacceptable. In Liyue, where the god of contracts reigns, only contracts may not be betrayed. I for one have no issue with little maneuvers outside their remit. Well then, we should go and prepare the perfumes used in the rite. Perfumes? Where will we get those? Do we buy them? No. Perfumes used to honor the gods must be freshly decocted. The quality of the silk flowers we require is also special. Silk flower petals contain a fibrous material of good quality, often used in brocade making. Its scent, however, is most elegant, and is especially suited for solemn events, like giving offerings to gods and adepti. It's time for Zhang Li's lectures on high society again. <laughs> we shall not speak of the details right now. Follow me. We shall go to the merchants to purchase our ingredients. Silk flowers? We certainly do. Which kind would you like? Which kind? The, uh, the good kind? The best kind? Remind Paima what kinds there are again. Ugh, you ignorant shoppers. Always coming in here with your stupid questions. Golden housemaiden, valley weaver, and fate's yearning. One of each to start with, if you don't mind. My goodness, this gentleman is quite the connoisseur. You two must be his servants. Uh, please refrain from any further attempts to contribute. Now then, please peruse at your leisure. Do let me know if you have any further thoughts. Silk flowers exhibit different properties based on how their environmental conditions differ from their ancestral habitat. Nevertheless, these are fine specimens, excellently preserved. Just look at the abundant foliage here, and these stamens, glamorous as a maiden of the Golden House. This strain is an evergreen and mostly grows under complex hydrological conditions. By contrast, this variety thrives in any dark, damp location, often in large clusters. Morphologically, 
It is distinguished by the profusion of petals and densely packed stamens, though its powerful scent gives it away just as easily. Lastly, this strain is quite the recluse. Unlike its exuberant cousins, flowers and foliage are minimal, and when in season, it has a subtle yet enduring scent. It was first discovered by the ancients when they scaled the mountains in search of the Adepti. Silk flowers have all but disappeared from the wild today due to geographical changes over Leo's history. Most are not grown by horticulturalists. Wow! A true connoisseur! Most of that was news even to me! I possess but a smattering of trivial knowledge. My traveler friend is the one to watch. They are on track to set foot in every corner of the world. Oh, Mr. Zhongli, you're way too humble. So, which silk flower did you want anyway? I'll take them all, boss. Again? How can I put this? When purchasing opera tickets, it is natural to decide based on which singer has the most melodious voice. The same logic applies when purchasing a pet bird. But this silk flower purchase is not an analogous case. The same logic does not apply. Perhaps you don't know. Tradition states that we should decoct perfume from different subspecies of silk flower when making an offering to a statue of the Seven. Rex Lapis will then make his own choice between the scents. Like several other tedious and complicated traditions, this one has become simplified over time. But this is the only rite of parting to take place for one of the seven in 3,700 years. As such, I do think we should honor tradition down to the last detail in this case. Now that's settled, a question. <clears throat> Do you have any mora on you? You forgot to bring money again? <sighs> Zhongli! Uh, if I may interject, did I hear you say that these flowers are to be an offering to the Lord of Geo himself? Yes, in a sense. Gosh, well, why didn't you say so? I heard the awful news about what happened at this year's Rite of Dissension. It would be bad luck to say it out loud, but I've been worried about our dear Lord ever since. I'm worried that everything I've heard is true. Since these flowers will be used to glorify our Lord, they're free of charge. Just don't forget to pass on my regards. Are you serious? Why wouldn't I be? I would be nobody if not for Rex Lapis. If he hadn't written those poems in praise of my wares, they'd only be worth a fraction of what I can sell them for today. Huh. So much folklore here revolves around Liyue's deity making cameo appearances in support of local businesses. Thank you, boss. I think I speak for all of us when I say that your generosity has saved our skins. Our skins? You were the one who forgot to bring money! Please, it's the least I could do. So, now that we've got the flowers, how do we make the perfume? Ideally, with the help of an expert. Unfortunately, none of my acquaintances have personal experience in the art of decoction. Talk about first world problems. Hence, I need you to help by asking around in the city. Try the common folk, especially women. So this time we get to go around town looking for nice smelling ladies to talk to? Paimon likes this job. I will wait for you near the Statue of the Seven. Meet me there when the perfume is ready. Maybe we can find some good candidates at the Adventurer's Guild. <gasps> Let's ask Lan! She's master of the Liyue branch, right? You can't beat me. Lan, we need to ask you for a favor. 
I stopped accepting commissions a long time ago. Sorry, you two, but you'll just have to ask another adventurer. Oh, it's not that kind of favor. It's just a teeny tiny thing. Wow. Just wow. I'm just going to assume that you're either joking or being sarcastic. To be fair, I put a lot of effort into my appearance for someone who spends all their time in the great outdoors. But I smell great? Don't be ridiculous. Well, Paimon thinks you smell amazing. So come on, Lon. What's your secret if not perfume? Now that you mention it, yes, there is something. What is that scent? Oh, it must be from the Qingxing flowers I picked on the way back. I forgot I still had them with me. Aha! The truth is out. Lon's got a soft spot for wildflowers. Uh, no, they were for medicinal use only. Anyway, this is a pointless conversation. If you want to know about perfume, try talking to Chi Mei. The fortune teller, right? Paimon remembers she smells pretty good. Thanks, Lon. See you around. Oh, not going to look for Chi Mei yet? me off guard. Most people aren't so direct. I think we need more time to get to know each other. Uh, we just wanted to know what perfume you normally use. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't actually use any. That said, some of the cosmetics I use are scented. Perhaps that's the cause of this confusion. Since I usually set up my stall by the docks, I avoid perfume like the plague, because Celestia forbid those lusty sailors catch a whiff and come hunting for the source. That's the worst thing Paimon's heard all day! While we're on the subject, have you never heard anyone mention Ying Ar's homemade perfume? Ying Air? Oh, as in scent of spring Ying Air? Yes, that's her. Many a rich family's daughter has gotten her to make perfume for them. Apparently, her homemade product is better than anything you'll find on the market. Great! This is just the intel we need! Finally, we're getting somewhere! If you have the time, come and have your fortune told down by the harbor. I'll give you a special price. Well, hello. You found me at last. I've been waiting for you. What? How did you know we were coming? Oh, I heard a rumor about a couple who were snooping around town looking for a sweet-smelling lady. Actually, I was starting to worry you wouldn't find me. This is the ultimate test of my appeal, after all. Snooping around? Why are you making it out like we're bad people? What can I say? People love to talk. Maybe you ought to be more discreet in the future if you don't want word to get around. Relax. I know why you're here. You want to get your hand on my homemade perfume, don't you? What kind would you like? <laughs> I'm not wearing any, darling. Could it be that you've been bewitched by my natural scent? If so, I'm afraid it's one of a kind. <sighs> Whatever this is, you guys need to snap out of it right now. Hand her the silk flowers. Three in one go. My goodness. You have extreme tastes for someone your age. Maybe the rumors I heard were true after all. You're on the prowl and need some sweet-smelling ammunition. Is that it?
Is that the best you could come up with? Even if you were genuinely offering perfume to a deity, that doesn't explain why you'd need three kinds. Sorry, your story just doesn't hold water. Xiong Li was right. People don't remember this tradition anymore. As one of my favorite poems goes, O oh, cherry tree, begrudge not thy blossoms as they are deflowered in the spring, for come winter, even thy sturdiest wood shall wither. That went over Paimon's head a little. <laughs> in short, I'm happy to help. Traveler, you can be my assistant, but you'd better make sure I'm the only person on your mind while you're hanging around with me. So, where is a good place for making sweet, sweet perfume? You mean Wan Mean Restaurant? Good choice. Let's go. I've had a word with Chef Mao. We can start work now. Are you ready to please me? What did you say? I meant make me proud, as my assistant, obviously. While I'm setting up, you can go and fetch some water. Have you fetched the water? No? Have a look behind Wan Mean Restaurant. Chef Mao is a professional chef. He must keep a store of pure water. Try something new this water will do nicely. Now, I need you to extract the silk flower essence using a crafting bench. Perfume making uses an altogether different technique from alchemy. Here, let me teach you. Very carefully, take hold of the mortar and pestle. Gently does it. You need to keep your wrist firm so your hand doesn't slip. Now use your strong hand to stir it with a persistent rhythm. Keep going until the juices start to come out. Ooh, you're a natural, like a fish to water. Now take these and try it out on your own using a nearby crafting bench. Don't forget to do all three. They look visually identical during the essence extraction process, but I will put them into separate containers when the perfume is ready.
Wow, this is some exquisite silk flower essence. On to the next stage, the most important one of all. The essence is placed into water and simmered over a low heat until most of the water has boiled off. You must take care to control the heat during this process. If the temperature goes too high, it will affect the scent. So please, focus on controlling the heat. This is the final step. Don't waste a drop of that essence now. We want all of it in there. Three perfumes are ready, and you, my friend, were a wonderful assistant. A testament to the lengths you will go to for romance. It's so rare to see nowadays. Wow, you actually remembered my throwaway comment. You know, you're cuter than people give you credit for. If I didn't have my guard up, I can see how easily one could be taken in. Anyway. Shall I give you a brief overview of each scent? It might just help you match the right scent to the right occasion. Paimon wants to hear this. This first one is sweet as candy, straight out of a fairy tale. Younger women will love it. The second one is for those with more refined tastes. The first choice for daughters of high society. Finally, the third one has a soft but lingering scent, like a mist that captures the last light of dusk. Mature women adore this one. All clear? Don't get them mixed up now. You'll ruin the mood. Good. Be sure to come visit if you ever need help with anything, okay? I'll leave you with some parting words. One who tries to sail three boats simultaneously should be careful not to go overboard. <laughs> Come and hang out with me at Scent of Spring sometime, okay? Let's take these three perfumes over to the Statue of the Seven. Mr. Zhongli's probably been waiting a while. Oh, you're back. Don't worry, I haven't waited long. Compared to the watch that Rex Lapis's statues have kept over Liu, this was but a brief moment. <laughs> well, how can a person compete with a statue? That is true. Well, have you brought the perfumes? Three sets, and not one less. <sighs> Thank you both. Let us offer them up. This is the first kind of perfume. Miss Yinger said that it's sweet as a dream, and it's liked by younger ladies. This is the second kind. It's got an elegant smell, and the daughters of high society love it. The third kind has a gentle but lingering fragrance. Something, something like the dusk mist and it's a favorite of mature ladies oh what was that that's the one older ladies like right does that mean that rex lapis is actually an older lady <laughs> perhaps perhaps Rex Lapis has taken on countless forms. Perhaps that really was one of them. What a shame. We only got to see the giant dragon form, and... <sighs> Let's hope the Chi-Sing can catch the real killer. We can leave that to the authorities. Let us focus on the fond farewell for Rex Lapis.
So, we finished another step in our preparations. What's next? Next, I would like the two of you to help me borrow the cleansing bell. Cleansing bell? At present, a friend of mine named Madame Ping is the guardian of the cleansing bell. She lives near Yujing Terrace. If you ask her, she will know what to do. Sure, but aren't you going to come with us? Ah, I have certain reasons why I cannot be there in person. Please, do this for me. Man, why is he gotta be so secretive this time? I apologize, but I won't be able to come with you this time. Once you've acquired the cleansing bell, meet me at Yujing Terrace. Things must change. Hmm, youngster, are you here to admire the flowers? Ah, but it's a shame. These glazed lilies have almost all wilted. What happened to them? Back in my day, People said that glazed lilies can read human hearts. If they heard beautiful sounds like laughter and singing, they would also bloom joyfully. But if they heard too much wild gossip or slander, they would quickly wither away. So that means these flowers feel what's happening in Lila? Yes, the rumors of Rex Lapis's death are no small matter. They are everywhere. Some say it was a Fatui plot. Others say that the Chising made it all up. And still others think that that which lies in the deep is breaking free. This harbor is like a mountain of dry tinder. One spark, and the fire will consume us all. Well, I shall say no more. This old woman's grown too old and naggy. Did you have something to say, youngster? Ah, that old trinket. <laughs> I remember it being here with me, but I've grown old. <laughs> I can't quite recall where it is exactly. An old friend of mine used to wear it on his person. Back when I was young, he saw me gazing at it often and gave it to me. But he told me then that if someone should come to borrow that bell, I should not be loath to part with it. It has been many years, and who knows how many times someone has come to borrow this bell. Still, though, I can't recall when it started. It's been a long time since anyone has come to borrow it. Oh, these old bones are so slow to look for things. I doubt you can wait that long. What a weird thing to be proud of. All right, children, there is no need to worry. I didn't place the bell very far away. Eh? Uh, do you live near here, Granny? Whoa, but this is Eugene Terrace. It's gotta be expensive. Oh, an old lady like me can't afford to buy a place in this city. See this ceramic teapot? My entire household is in here. How does that work? Paimon would fit in there. And why do you need Paimon to go in anyway? Can't you just lift the lid and look inside? 
Oh, youngsters. I simply mean that the bell is somewhere inside this teapot, and you are quite welcome to borrow it. If you can find it. Aren't you youngsters in a hurry to find that bell? Hop to it, then. But be careful. I haven't cleaned this place up in a long time. If you were to get dirt on your beautiful clothes, it would take some work to clean up. Youngsters, this is where this old woman keeps all her things. Quickly now, go fetch that bell. Whoa, that sounds like Granny's voice. So, this is her teapot? What's going on? Oh dear, so many cobwebs. <laughs> it seems I really haven't cleaned it in a long while. Sorry to trouble you, children. Please help an old lady clean up. Yeah. Did you notice? The cobwebs were made of elemental energy. How long has it been since Granny last swept this place? One of these two. Or at least we wouldn't have to camp outside. Oh, you found it. <laughs> Youngsters are so quick on their feet. In and out in no time. You youngsters really are quick. An adeptus. Oh, I haven't heard anyone say those words in earnest for a long time. As to whether I am one or not, child, surely you already understand. <sighs> Hyman kind of knows what you mean. Is also kind of confused. Are you really giving us the bell just like that, Granny? Don't you think it's weird? Something's just happened to Rex Lapis, and then we come running up asking for it? 
Oh, don't be silly. Liyue Harbor has been through a great deal in its history. In that time, it has seen the departure of countless Adepti. But no matter what, we have always performed the rite of parting first before any other matters. To cry, catch the murderer at the top of one's lungs, but ignore the rite of parting. That, to me, is what is wrong-headed. Now that you have come to borrow the bell, I guess that perhaps an old friend of mine has finally decided to take matters into their own hands. So, why would I be unwilling to lend you the bell? Oh? Well, if it came to that, <laughs> they would find a certain old lady knocking at their door. We haven't met in a while anyway. It would be nice to share a drink and chat. Well, you must have things to do. Since you have the bell, you should return. Oh, and do tell the person who sent you that if they have time, they can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. We will. Thanks, Granny. <sighs> it seems my old friends just can't stand idly by anymore. Let's just hope nothing messy comes of this. Fortune find you. Indeed, this is the cleansing bell. Hmm. It's in good condition. Let's place the perfume we've prepared inside. Of course. How would I know that the bell was with her otherwise? That's suspicious. But if you don't want to talk about it, we won't pry. Oh, yes, that old granny asked us to tell you something. If you have the time, you can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. <laughs> that tone does not suit you. Still, her teapot is indeed very good. There are none better for brewing tea. When a suitable time arrives, I'll bring a spot of fine tea and pay her a visit. So what's the next step in our preparations? Hmm. Next, we need to purchase kites. Ooh, Paimon loves kites! Are you taking us kite flying? Is this our break time? <laughs> no, no. Kites are children's toys, yes. But they also play various symbolic roles in Liyue's rituals. I will explain it to you. But our next course of action should probably be to purchase the kites first. Oh, sure. Curiouser and curiouser. <laughs> Sir, you're here. The seven kites you asked for have been made to order. Would you like to take them now? Yes, thank you. It's rare to see customers who want to buy this type of kite nowadays. In the early days, we used to get orders from people of all walks of life. Well, this is Mr. Zhang Li from the Longsheng Funeral Parlor, so he's probably well versed in all these walks of life. We've talked about a whole bunch of things while traveling with him. He seems to know Liyue's favorite topics, money and government, really well, but he likes talking about less useful topics instead. Well, that's because I prefer to share fun things with you. <laughs> 
children's toys are very fun things, that's for sure. I enjoy watching the children at play as much as anyone else. But there is more to it than that. Finely crafted toys are well loved by children, but this craft itself has been honed over thousands of years, and there is meaning behind that. I have made kites in Liyue for 40 years, and I am intimately familiar with the forms passed down from my ancestors. The meaning of these seven kites is far from banal. Indeed. These are decorations used in the rite of parting. The seven kites represent the seven. I took the liberty of coloring outside the lines when doing the insignia of the Animo Archon. As for the kite that honors the Geo Archon, one must follow the contract given right down to the last letter. These patterns are ancient, and you can also find them in the Golden House. Ah, Paimon's heard that name before! Huh? The design of this kite displays a firm grasp on the cyclicality and eternity so dear to the Electro Archon. These markings of tree and leaf pay due honor to wisdom and the passage of time. All this on a single kite. Truly astonishing. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame. As does that which the Cryo Archon once. <sighs> yes. These details are masterfully done. <laughs> the compliments of a learned man truly are pleasant. Well then, Granny Shen. I shall take these back with me. As for the payment... Well, allow me. <laughs> no, I was merely passing through. I see Mr. Zhang Li's the same as ever. When paying, well, when getting others to pay for him, he neither looks at the price tag nor his wallet. He knows a great deal about money, and about the trials of the common man. He just doesn't consider poverty to be something that could ever happen to him. Or perhaps, you could say that he cannot imagine himself lacking money. How has he not died of hunger yet? <laughs> Child, you are as fond of jokes as ever. Well then, since we've purchased our kites without incident, there's no need to take a break before moving to the next step in our preparations. The rite of parting requires helping hands as well as materials. We should be able to find some people near the harbor. Oh, by the way, take this bag of money. You probably won't want to let Zhang Li do the bargaining, if you know what I mean. Hmm, seems I missed out on some interesting information. I suppose I'll just have to find a more opportune moment next time. Oh, help? Sure! I, Tick, always put in 100% effort into everything I do. Of course, there'll be a premium if you want me to give 110%. So what's the job? Let me see. We are still missing some wooden implements over at Yujing Terrace. They aren't uncommon objects, so I didn't make any special preparations for them. No problem. That'll be 20,000 mora for a single trip. How does that sound? Done. Oh. You're a straight shooter, huh? We have a deal.
A full day of odd jobs at Yujing Terrace. Hmm. No problem. 25,000 per day. A fair trade, yes? Whoa, that's expensive. Um, could you give us a bit of a discount on account of the whole Hero of Mondstadt thing? Hero of Mondstadt? Never heard of them. Well, you may never have heard of this hero, but it seems you've heard of Mora nonetheless. Thus, I will simply pay the whole sum. This price will do. No loss to me for a day's work. Hiring help? Sure. But let me just say first that I'm a reserve member of the Adventurer's Guild. I take adventuring commissions, but I don't do anything clerical. Adventure? Venturing into the mountains to capture a few crystal flies seems adventurous enough. Eh? That's not hard. Almost a bit too easy for a reserve adventurer. Nah, never mind. I'll only charge you 15,000, Mora. What say you? A most fair price. This is all you've got? Then no can do. Child? No, no, no. He's putting up the money? Still, no. Wouldn't that mean that I have to make two trips rather than one? Uh, how about this? Let's make a trade. I'll take what you're offering right now, and... Get me a piece of iron ore. I'll take that as payment to go see that child person. What do you think? Guess we've got no choice. Have you brought the goods? Hmm, this is good ore. As an adventurer, one must have a trusty weapon by one side. This'll work. Once I've finished, I will go and claim my payment. All finished then? Splendid. Any leftover cash is yours to keep. A favor for the Fatui should never go unrewarded. You think you can buy us off with some loose change? No way! Paimon demands to know when the next payment is coming! <laughs> well, how does this sound? You give me the information I need, and maybe I'll leave the Northland Bank's vaults open and unattended for half an hour. Does that mean you know what he's after? Yikes! You're right! Signora! <laughs> you both need to calm down. I don't know what's gotten into you. Just what is this about? The atmosphere got so tense all of a sudden. Next, we need some everlasting incense. For this, we need to go to Boo Boo Pharmacy, the finest pharmacy in all of... Is... everything okay? Everything is fine. I was just informing them that they need not return the surplus mora. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be going. Kaiman definitely felt like Child wasn't happy with us just now. Huh. The reception is deserted. 
And it seems kind of spooky in here. Hello? Is anybody there? Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. Huh? D did you hear that? Where did it come from? The reception, it seems. How about you go check it out and Paimon will bring up the rear. This one over here. What's the talisman doing on her forehead? It can't be. She's a zombie. Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. I am Chi Chi. Once upon a time, Chi Chi died. Then, Chi Chi was saved by the Adepti. Now, Chi Chi is a zombie. Like this would be unimaginable in Mondstadt. Uh, hello, little girl. Do you sell everlasting incense here? Excuse me, sir. Did you bring your prescription? I... Surely no prescription is needed to purchase everlasting incense. It's not a controlled substance. Chi-Chi can get your medicine. But... Only if you show Chi-Chi your prescription. These are Chi-Chi's orders from Chi-Chi. Zombies are limited to acting within the confines of their orders. And somehow in this case, the zombie issues her own orders to herself. My dear Chi-Chi, we didn't bring a prescription, I'm afraid. But we do hope that you can still help us find some everlasting incense. Okay then. How did you manage that? But... Chi-Chi helps you. You help Chi-Chi. Only fair. Since when do customers need to do favors for customer service staff? Never mind. Just think of it as a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. That way everybody wins. Sometimes in Liyue, the art of the deal is simply about victory via mental gymnastics. Go to Mount Tianhong, find the Guizhong Ballista, and hunt a cocoa goat. Please and thank you. Hmm. Guizhong Ballista. I have heard of this device before. It's a kind of crossbow turret, installed on Mount Qinhong by an adeptus in the distant past. An early mechanical device. Located in Qianhong Pass, it was designed to automatically fire at large monsters, protecting Liyue from external threats. Mr. Zhang Li really knows Liyue inside out. Apparently not quite. This is the first I have ever heard of the Coco Goat. The Coco Goat is a legendary animal, an adept beast. Did you want to add anything else, or...? No, just that the Coco Goat is a legendary animal. An Adepta Beast. What it looks like... Don't know. Where to find it? Don't know either. Where it came from? Also don't know. Very well then. Let's start by investigating near the Guizhong Ballista. Perhaps we will find some clues. <sighs> what the heck is a coca goat? So many medicines. 
cocoa goat. Go find it. currently inoperable in any case. This device is broken. Ah, oh, what? It broke? After millennia of wear and tear, even Adepti contraptions are difficult to maintain. So what are we gonna do? Quick, Mr. Zhongli, use your unlimited high society knowledge powers! Hmm. You almost make it sound like I'm some sort of bourgeois parasite whose only utility lies in providing quaint pieces of trivia on demand. That said, let me think for a moment. Ah, yes. Spare parts were made for the Guizhong Ballista when it was first built, in case it was damaged in battle. As I recall, there is a military supply post from that period somewhere inside the pass. If we can retrieve the spare parts from where they are stored, we may be able to repair the Guizhong Ballista. One just needs to understand the basic working principles of the device. So... what you're saying is that you actually understand the working principles? I have a smattering of knowledge on the topic. With the parts in hand, I could at least tinker with it. Supply post. Here, post. <laughs> Mission accomplished. These parts look useful. One moment. I will try to repair the device. It is done. The Guizhong Ballista is more intricately designed than I thought. Ooh! Now how do we turn it on? It's easy enough. We simply need to do this. Look. It even has a scope. Over here we have... nothing. And over there, more nothing. Hey, just what do you think you're doing? So you fixed up this turret because you're planning to do what exactly? Not a turret, a Guizhong Ballista. Also, kindly state your name before you ask a question. It's just good manners. Ha! <laughs> Are you blind or something? You're looking at the leader of the treasure hoarders, old man. This area is supposed to be chock full of hidden treasures, but you can't get anywhere near them with this thing keeping watch. <laughs> it might look like any other mechanical device, but trust me, it's got a mind of its own. Last time we approached the mountain, it nearly skewered one of our guys. A few of us risked our lives to disarm it, which amazingly we managed. And then we turn our backs for two seconds, and you've already gone and repaired it! The next thing you'll be repairing is your faces! And that's if you get out of this alive! Tut tut. Vandalizing the legacy of an Adeptus for selfish gain. Disgraceful behavior. It is not we who need reprimanding, but you. Nice and 
another test. <laughs> that tingle? <laughs> Dry! I'm the bright man. It's <laughs> Terra Smash! Troubling ourselves over this rabble is not worth the time. We should focus on our contract with Chi-Chi. Oh, yeah, that! So we've got the Guizhong Ballista working, but where's our Coca Goat? A search using the Guizhong Ballista revealed no significant life forms nearby, save for the usual wildlife. What's more, a contraption built using Adeptus technology should have no trouble detecting an Adepta beast. As Chi-Chi put it. <sighs> Which means... A Paimon wouldn't go that far. We did something positive, right? <sighs> we won't solve anything while standing here and racking our brains. Let's return to Boo Boo Pharmacy, explain that we could not find a Cocoa Goat, and review our next step. Good idea. We did our best, and that's what counts. Forgive us. We were unable to fulfill our end of the contract. We found no trace of the Coco Goat Adepta Beast of which you speak. <sighs> what a disappointment. Don't worry about it. But I feel very disappointed. Aw, poor Chi Chi. Why does Paimon feel so guilty all of a sudden? Cocoa goat milk is tasty. So tasty. Much better than normal goat milk. Only an Adeptabeast could make such tasty milk. I'm sorry. I have a poor memory. I cannot remember the name of the milk. That's why I wrote it down. Where did I put it? Ah, here. This is the name. Coconut milk. Huh? <sighs> I owe you both an apology. I hastily agreed to what appeared to be an equitable agreement with this zombie child when perhaps I should have undertaken further due diligence. Never mind, Zhongli. You didn't know. As the Liyue proverb goes, all things are random and... Um... So how are you supposed to predict anything? Literally no one could have seen this coming. Excuse me, everyone. Did Chi-Chi say a bad thing? But Paimon's gonna leave the job of shattering this poor kiddo's world to you. No. Im impossible. Seems Chi Chi took this pretty hard. <laughs> Someone learnt a valuable life lesson today, then. Thank you all for looking after my little Chi-Chi. Might I ask who? Ah, oh, how rude of me. I'm Baiju, boss of the Boo Boo Pharmacy. Paimon thought Chi-Chi was the boss. Turns out it's some wacko who wears medicinal ingredients around his neck. What a sorry state of affairs. This little mascot is even more of a simpleton than Chi-Chi. Ah, the medicine, the snake is speaking. I prefer to stay silent. 
befaced with strangers, I must speak, lest you mistake me for an escapee from the medicine cabinet, for I am a living, breathing serpent! <laughs> Don't mind Chung Shung. She's a good girl, really. As for you three, communal chaos causing with Chi Chi aside, what business brings you here? Do you sell everlasting incense in this fine establishment? Everlasting incense? Why, of course we do. Phew, at last. Things are finally starting to come together. Three million mora. Top quality. Guaranteed. Aw, oh, too bad the cheating have taken it over for now. Security will be tighter than usual. Hmm. Three million. An innocuous number in and of itself. Though, practically speaking, it could be a hard sum to come by. It's a crazy number! We'd never be able to make that much more! And as for Mr. Zhang Li, he's around three million short. <laughs> this is correct. What are we gonna do? Is this the part where we go crawling back to child? <laughs> <laughs> Coco Goat! Coco Goat! <laughs> my sides hurt! Oh my goodness! I cannot believe you fell for that! Hey! Less laughter, more sympathy! <laughs> I'm almost in tears over here. Ah, uh, thank you. That was the best laugh I've had in a long time. In return, I'm more than happy to sort out this mess you've managed to get yourselves into. Excuse me, sir. Dr. Baiju, isn't it? Truly honored. I'm Child, one of the Fatui Harbingers. Forgive my audacity, but I see a great many opportunities for us to collaborate in the future. If Boo Boo Pharmacy needed a stable supply of, say, coconut milk, the Fatui could help by setting up a robust and speedy distribution network. Strange. I knew the Fatui infiltrated businesses with seductive deals, but so much fuss over coconut milk? Coconut milk. Baiju, quick. Chi Chi wants coconut milk. Ah, yes, of course, Chi Chi. Anything you want. Thank you, child. I look forward to a successful collaboration in the future. I can give you a discount on that everlasting incense, too. Let's say 2,990,000 more. That's like zero difference from 3 million! Hmm. 2,990,000. Also an innocuous number in and of itself, though practically speaking, it is a whole 10,000 less than the original sum of 3 million. Well, now that this is settled, we must head back to Yujing Terrace. Mr. Child, Dr. Baiju, little Miss Chi Chi, see you soon. Ah, that lot is an absolute riot. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I laughed so hard. So, you've been eavesdropping, I hope. What have I missed? Yes, Master Child. They spoke of the Qixing taking the Golden House. Well, well, well. Ningguang and her Qixing cronies. What else would they be hiding in the Golden House, if not the Exuvia? I apologize, but I warned you, didn't I? As the old Leo Asang goes, the walls have ears. This is good. There will be coconut milk from now on. Yes, it's good. What an odd exchange we've had. Well, I look forward to your patronage in the future as well. <laughs> that sound is a laughter of a man who's found new people to fleece. Consider yourselves warned. Well, as it stands, we've hired helpers, and we've acquired the Everlasting Incense. 
The completion of our preparations is not far off. Ooh, finally! Well, Traveler, have you gained anything from our adventure so far? Odd. <laughs> Which is it, I wonder? The questions that such travels raise are ever so complicated. Well, I'll leave you to ruminate over it yourself. As to remuneration for your help, I've decided... to treat you to a meal. Oh, ah, yes, don't worry. I will remember to bring the Mora this time. Tonight, I shall take you both to an old hole in the wall, praised throughout Lyra. In a cool restaurant? <laughs> Indeed. Let us meet near the harbor at third round knockout. <laughs> ah, you're here. There's no need to order. I've already done so. Third round knockout is not for lightweights, like those taverns in Mondstadt. Here, the owner does not take such unorthodox orders as fruit juice. I ordered some wine-fermented sweet rice balls for you, if that counts. If it is to your liking, dear customers, I shall continue the tale of Lady Ningguan's Jade Chamber. Hey! There's even a storyteller here! Great atmosphere! Besides fine wine, the excellent ambiance is the reason why this place is so well loved. But when I say ambiance, I refer to a different sort from the one the Tevat Travel Guide uses to judge other establishments. As you all know, high above the land of Liyue lies a pavilion in the clouds, a palace in the mist. What does it mean to have all-seeing eyes? This, my friends, Lady Ningguan's masterwork that bridges earth and sky. Imagine. The weather is clear, and you gaze down from the deck on the world below. Behold! The glorious sights of Liyue Harbor, stretching out far and wide. They say that when Lady Ningguang ponders important affairs, she retreats to her jade chamber with none but her three closest confidants in tow. Why brings she these trusted three to sift through sources, dig through documents, looking for information? Piece by piece, facts and figures paint a picture on the walls of the chamber. But well before the wall is filled, Lady Ningguang's mind is made up. Having made her call, she has every last document shredded, and whoosh, she scatters the shavings out her window. Ah, look at them, how they billow in the wind like a sudden swirling lizard. As the fragments fall, traces of text flicker before the eyes of the merchants of Liyue, like ink stains in white snow. The saying goes, the rarest treasures in the land are the words brought by the paper snow. For the words of the Tianquan have the power to move mountains, and all throughout the land know it. These are but scraps of paper, and yet they guide Lady Ningguang's hand. Such is their value. Merely grasping one or two of them will surely gift you a fragment of her wisdom. Enough to stay a step or two. 
ahead of your peers. Tiantuan Ningguang. Feels like we're hearing this name a lot. Liyue locals talk about her. The Fatui hate her. She's most likely the one who hid the Exuvia. And we saw her at the Rite of Dissension. Huh. Paimon wonders what sort of person she is. At last I have found you. You who returned from Juayun Karst. Who's there? Wait. I am not with the Millilith. Nor am I here to claim your bounty. However, I am an emissary of the Liyue Chising. My name is Ganyu, secretary at the Yuahai Pavilion, and I have come specifically to meet you. Well, in concrete terms, I am the corporate secretary for the Chising. At the moment, I am serving as Lady Ningguang's special emissary. Ningguang sent you? We were literally just talking about her. My apologies, you who have returned from Jiayun Karst. I am duty-bound and cannot extend my courtesy to you in full. But I have with me a letter from Lady Ningguang. She extends a formal invitation to you in her capacity as Tianquan. She invites you to her palace in the sky. An official invitation? Lady Ningguang said this. Invite him to come here. I wish to meet him. At the Jade Chamber, together we shall snip every one of these entwining dark threads. Come. Come and, see these rare and, and with that, the emissary who called herself Ganyu just disappeared. But we've received an invitation from the Liu at Chising. Paimon still can't believe it. We'll be meeting people that have way more money than Paimon could ever count. We should be on our best manners. <laughs> an invitation to visit the Jade Chamber is a rare honor indeed. You'd best be on your way now. But don't forget about the rite of parting. Once you've finished at the Jade Chamber, meet me at Dihua Marsh. Don't worry, we won't forget. Dihua Marsh. We'll see you there. <gasps> Look up there! That's the Jade Chamber! on the map is the sensible thing to do. Let's look around. There has to be a way up there nearby. Hey, look! There's some sort of mechanism thingy. Since this is the right place, it must have something to do with the Jade Chamber. Hang on a moment. 
moment. Look down there. Looks like we've gotten close to the Guizhong Ballista. Hmm. <gasps> Paimon has a new idea. Why don't we shoot you up to the Jade Chamber using the Ballista? Uh, no. Paimon may have just forgotten to think about the safety measures. That's right! Now that you mention it, we could use the Guizhong Ballista to see if there's another way up nearby! Halt! Who trespasses on these hallowed grounds? Exactly. What are you talking about? We're invited guests. What makes you think you can treat us like this? No. Wait. Maybe this was Ningwan's plan all along. She pretended to invite us to the Jade Chamber, but set up a megalith ambush here to arrest us. Uh, now Paimon's mad! You! Over there! This is a trick, isn't it? How shameless! What? We're just on guard duty. What do you mean, shameless? What nonsense! Seize these suspicious intruders at once! Well, here they come! Line them up and knock them down! <sighs> What's all this about? Lady Kutching, these two strange people suddenly appeared. They seem to have designs on the Guizhong Ballista. Who are you calling strange? Hmm? You want to go to the Jade Chamber? Who are you? We're invited guests here to look for the Lila Chising. Who are you? Well, as it happens, I am one of the Liyue Chising. Oh. I'm Kuching, the Yuhung of the Chising. I know of you, Traveler. You're Ningguang's guests, yes? Didn't expect to meet you here in the mountains. Wow. Paimon didn't think we'd meet some super rich big shot out here in the middle of nowhere either. The Guizhong Ballista in Tianhong Pass has long been in disrepair, and yet it was fixed in a single night. I came here to investigate that occurrence. These Millilith are just here to guard the scene, not to arrest anyone. So this was all a misunderstanding? Baimon never would have thought. Anyway... For a mortal to be able to repair an Adepti mechanism is quite the mystery, even to the Chising. Uh, that was... Huh? Oh, right. So, Lady Yuhang, might you have any idea why Lady Tianquan invited us to go to the Jade Chamber? Just call me Kuching. I'd say that Ningguang's purpose is to request that the savior of Mondstadt take a more neutral stance. Or at least, to not wholly side with the Adepti. We're not 
taking sides. We spoke with the Adepti. They want to protect Liu as well. When you say protect, you're referring to their sanctimonious arrogance, aren't you? Huh? You are mortals and thus under their protection. There was no way they would have regarded you as someone with the ability to assassinate a god. Naturally, they would also regard Ningguang's locking down the area, questioning the citizenry, and pursuit of the assassin to be pointless work. Perhaps they even wonder if there might be a cover-up. I'll say it like it is. They're underestimating us. Well, you've got a point there. Still, this is the first time Paimon's seen a person from Liyue who doesn't respect the gods or the Adepti. <laughs> Should I respect the shallow sense of time and condescension to mortals that has caused them to delay in moving against us, Chising? Forget it. I shouldn't speak of them this way. This skepticism is mine alone, and Ningguang does not share it. Either way, I will admit that the actions of the Adepti this time were quite restrained. Rex Lapis's death is indeed an extraordinary circumstance. But to think that they would call for a council of Adepti rather than come down here directly. How surprisingly civilized of them. Well, for Ningguang, she would talk anything and everything out if she could. But I doubt we can do that here. The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? <sighs> Another super bold statement! <sighs> I'll stop here. Honestly, I hadn't intended to say so much. But you're a good listener, Traveler. You should both be off to the Jade Chamber. Don't be late now. Ningguang's schedule is packed to the gills all the way till next year. The cream of Liyue's mercantile crop all see ascending to the Jade Chamber is the greatest honor. Each brings rich gifts as they visit, all to curry a little favor with Ningguang. Favor? But... but... Wait! That's right! Greeting gifts are a staple of Leah's culture! We need to get one! Not to curry favor or anything, just to... respect Leah's culture! All right, all right. You can decide on your greeting gift yourselves. Let me tell you how to get to the Jade Chamber first. You didn't actually have to come to Mount Tianhong. Go back to Liyue Harbor. Find a guide at the Yuehai Pavilion, and... Well then, may we meet again, Traveler. Well, that Yuehung may not respect the gods, but Paimon thinks she's a pretty cool person. Should we give to Ningguang when we see her? Oh, right! Paimon dreamed of an amazing snack last night! Sugar frosted slime! Paimon has a feeling that it would be perfect for a super rich person like Ningguang. Why don't we go with that for a gift? With a certain boom shakalaka, of course. Let's go gather ingredients. Time waits for no one, and neither will our riches. Ooh, look at that slime. It looks crystal clear and very delicious. That's the one! Did 
you hear that? It seemed like it came from those ruins over there. Uh-oh. It looks like the treasure orders have locked someone inside. There's no end to this. Thank you for your help, kind travelers. If you hadn't come to my aid, I surely would have rotted in this cell. Those treasure hoarders. When their mood was good, they'd rearrange those pots of sweet flowers. When they were in a bad mood, they'd rearrange my face. Aw, oh, it was nothing. No need to thank us all at once or anything. <laughs> I understand. Don't worry, I will compensate you both. Don't say that. I only escaped this predicament because of you. I'm Meng Dan, a supplier for Mingxing Jewelry in Liyue Harbor. I often walk around these mountains in search of antiques. I never expected that those treasure hoarders would have their eyes on the same ruins that I had. Before I knew it, they'd caught and imprisoned me. Is there anything that you lack? Uh, antiques, treasure, various knickknacks, you name it. Well, as long as you want what I have to offer, of course. Actually, we are looking for something. Oh? And what might that be? Do you have a box that can store presents? We'd like a pretty one. The kind that you can use to store snacks. Of course we do. How can one sell antiques without gift boxes? At Mingxing Jewelry, we have the best gift wrapping service in the Seven Nations. Now just give me a moment, and I'll let the boss know. You can go see her whenever you require that box. Great! Paimon Sugar Frosted Slime now comes in a beautiful package! Mung already told me about it. Thank you both for saving him. Many of the best goods in our store were found by Uncle Mung. If anything were to happen to him, it would be impossible for us to continue doing business. Here, this container is itself an antique, with at least 140 years of history. It's already been cleaned. Will it do? Yep, yep, yep! It's great! Hang on a moment. Could we borrow one other thing? Sure. Please help yourselves. As long as it's on our shelves. Traveler, this clay pot looks really awesome. If we use an antique as our mixing bowl, we should be able to make a great snack. It's done! The one and only sugar frosted slime! Carefully now. Into the box it goes and dust it over with a bit more powdered sugar. Oh, yes. You might want to use these two freshly picked flowers as decorations, too. Woohoo! It looks beautiful! Great! Now that we've put all that we've got into this box, let's go to the Jade Chamber to see Mingguang. Jewelry's out of stock, but we have some new items in. And the way I go! According 
listen to Kuching, this is what we should say. Excuse me, do you sell the moon here? Yes. How many would you like? It's not convenient to speak of numbers here. Ah, well said. Please, use this to ascend to the chamber. Ah, uh, yes, speaking of which, are you two the guests that Lady Ningguang has arranged to meet with today? Yep. And yet the code they used was not the one for guests, but for the Yuhang. What's going on here? I've been waiting for you, returnee from Joyen Karst. Uh, it's Ningguang! Since this is our first meeting, um, we've prepared a gift. I hope you like it. Oh, for me. You have my thanks. It seems that I have made things difficult for you, considering that you were supposed to be my guests. <laughs> oh no, it's nothing. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, too. This palace floats in the skies, higher than the peak of any mountain. From this vantage point, one may survey all of Liyue. I have been gathering the funds necessary to build it from the time I began learning the merchant's craft. And since becoming the Tianchuan, I have spared no effort in hiring the best craftsmen to constantly extend it. At first, it was but the size of one room. Now, it is large enough to blot out the moon in the skies above Liyue. One day, I believe it will overshadow all seven nations. Not many from outside Liyue earn the right to ascend to the Jade Chamber. But I have been in correspondence with the acting Grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius, who spoke highly of you. As such, I have been putting eyes and ears out ever since you reached Liyue. What? And I finally got wind of your movements when you were on the way to Wangshu Inn. Uh, wait! Was Virgil Goldet one of your people? <laughs> Just Virgil Goldet? No. Everyone at Wangshu Inn is one of ours. <gasps> hmm. At the Guizhang Ballista, yes? <laughs> I fear that peeking would have been a little difficult from this altitude. Our eyes and ears are more than sufficient. You two are very interesting people, after all. It would be natural to take an interest. Well, I wouldn't expect you to trust us, considering that you have had far more interactions with the Adepti. The reason I invited you here was to clear up some misunderstandings. I believe that you've heard of the Archon War. Many gods used to walk this earth, and many long wars were fought between them that did not abate until 2,000 years ago. Much blood was shed, and many lives were lost. In the end, only seven victors remained standing in Tevat. They built cities and nations on the corpses of the vanquished, and thus began the era of the Seven. You can see Goyun Stone Forest from here, I trust. It is no natural rock formation. Those are giant spears of rock hurled by Rex Lapis during the war. Beneath the spears lie those cast down by Rex Lapis in those days, gods that failed to seize the title of Archon. Not only is it true that gods may die, but so too has the membership of the Seven changed over the last two millennia. Rex Lapis's passing is an unimaginable disaster for Liyue, 
But the Order of the Seven will not collapse simply because of that. Another Lord of Geo will arise sooner or later. Yet, how are we to forget Rex Lapis? When that time comes, the relationship between the people of Liyue and the gods and Adepti will surely be different from before. Even in a new era, the Liyue Qixing remain Rex Lapis's former subjects. Do you really think us capable of having played a part in his demise? Of lacking the foresight to see the certain repercussions? <laughs> that day at Yujing Terrace, it was also very sudden. Even I was caught completely off guard. You were there, you no doubt saw. But our enemy has long lain hidden within the harbor. If we do not act against them now, they will surely gain the upper hand. Hiding the Exuvia was a necessary maneuver to take the initiative back, to play the spider while our foes scurry about. Who's this enemy you're talking about? What do you think, Traveler? Huh? What are you two talking about? Well answered. Uh, huh? Huh, <sighs> the scenery out here is fine indeed, but the wind is a little strong. Our preparations to receive guests within are complete, so please, this way. you two. Make yourselves at home if you wish. Can we really? I have invited you two here as friends. And when friends come over to play, our enjoyment comes first. Naturally. Why, you've kept your ear to the ground, I see. That's because even the storytellers are talking about it. Everyone's after a piece of paper from that wall. It's super famous. That's because that wall records Leo's secrets. Merchants have always been attracted to secrets. But the secrets of the mercantile world are of no interest to you, are they, Traveler? You're rather special, really. And I think you're quite aware of that. If possible, I'd like to have your trust. But if you were to choose the more trustworthy person between myself and Kuching... <laughs> You'd pick Kuching? Nah, I had a feeling. I originally thought her a bit too hard-headed. With someone of her character on the Chising, I've had some extra messes to clean up behind the scenes. But after she said those words, the time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Chising don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? Well, I must say that quite a few of my doubts have been dispelled. I won't deny that Rex Lapis's passing seems advantageous to us, but for Liyue's sake, we cannot allow ourselves to be shackled by rumors of our usurpation of power. Indeed, it seems that you understood what I meant to say from the very beginning. I called for the gag order and for the Exuvia to be hidden to temporarily stabilize the situation, and also to prevent something similar to the incident in Mondstadt. With Rex Lapis's death, the Fatui have busied themselves with many clandestine actions beyond their diplomatic remit. As the Tianchuan, one responsible for Liyue, I cannot be too concerned with appearances when opposing them. Allowing the rite of parting to take place was also meant to buy some time for us to take control of Liyue's administration. <sighs> it's exactly as Zhongli said. 
The chasing only provided the venue for the ride, so they could use us for their own ends. Wait, that's right. Speaking of ends, could I say one other thing? Of course. Vimon's heard that anyone who sends a greeting gift gets a little something in return. So, does that include us? <laughs> it's all right. I like direct people. Well, we have made quite a bit of trouble for you recently. How about this? You can pick any one object here as you please. And you may take it with you. Yay! Paimon was just waiting for you to say that! Let's see, what should we get? <gasps> one of the sheets on that, that wall! Don't look at Paimon like that! One of these sheets of paper will sell for crazy prices, even if it's only as large as Paimon's fingernail! Just imagine how much more a whole untorn sheet would sell for! Let's grab one! The biggest one! So, have you made your choice? You don't have to confirm it with me. Just choose one and take it. Afterwards, why not sit down for a while in the Jade Chamber? Or have a short stroll? Rest is also an integral part of any journey. Come now. There's no need to stand on ceremony. Loosen up a little. Easy search. The biggest sheet is right up there in the most obvious spot. Let's go with that one. La 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 la. Let's see what's written on it. Huh? There's a place marked with a circle on here. <gasps> oh, could it be treasure? Whatever it is, it better make us filthy rich. Let's see what's written over here. Sigil of permission, something, something, fatui, research, copy. Huh? Aw, oh, that doesn't sound like treasure at all. Oh, this piece of paper shows that a chasing spy discovered traces of classified fatui research on the sigil of permission. Oh, Ningguang did say that the Fatui have been up to all kinds of mischief in the shadows of Liyue. Spreading rumors, wanting to get their hands on the Archon's body and whatnot. But research on the Sigil of Permission? Paimon wonders what they're up to. Speaking of which, there's also some connection between you and the Sigil of Permission. Seems there's still more for us to find out. Oh, you really think so? Well, should we not go then? Oh, so you're saying that it's precisely because we can't completely trust Ningguang that we should confirm the truth of what she says for ourselves. Hmm. That's way out of Paimon's league. Paimon thinks she's been nothing but good to us. Mm, anyway, we'll see if you're onto something. Um, before we look for Zhongli at Dihua Marsh, let's go to the place marked out on these papers and see if the Fatui really are up to no good there. Frozen. There really were Fatui at the location written down on this piece of paper. And, uh, they look really mad at us, too. Freshness preserved. Hi. Terra smash this quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess this is it. My 
Before? But where? Oh, Paimon knows! It looks just like the sigil of permission the child gave you! Hmm, but how did a relic of the Adepti end up in the hands of someone like Child? Suspicious. Oh, that's right! Cloud Retainer said that when the Lord of Geo created the sigil of permission, it wasn't to be used as some old relic. Talismans like that were once used in the Archon War to channel divine powers. Maybe the Fatui are copying the Sigil of Permission in hopes of achieving a similar effect. Being able to channel divine power in battle? Whew, that sounds pretty dangerous. And the plot thickens. We'll need to keep an eye on Child, that's for sure. Hmm. All right, that's enough sticking around here. We gotta go meet up with Zhang Li soon. The last stop on our right of parting preparations tour is Dihua Marsh. Let's go! Paimon hates being late. Right on time. I myself only arrived moments ago. Did you enjoy your visit to the Jade Chamber? It was so big and pretty and expensive. Paimon's never seen such a fancy schmancy place before. Indeed. It's second to none in all of Liyue. Then you met with Ningguang, I trust? What did you talk about with her? She's Super rich and so generous. Oh, Paimon thinks she's very friendly. Yeah, his take on Ningguang is quite different from Paimon's. He thinks that even the tackless Yuhang is more trustworthy than her. Oh, so you also met with Kuching then? What did she have to say? She said, the time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue at Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? <laughs> no respect for the Divine. Indeed, contrary to the Everbold Kuching, Ningguang is more of a businesswoman at heart, though they are both members of the Qixing. Although she's friendly, there's no way of clearly discerning her true intentions. Yes, she has only relied on herself to rise to her current position. No ordinary person could ever achieve that. It's said that she's the one behind the constant expansion of the Jade Chamber. It's the second most important thing to her. Even if she ever gave up the position of Tianxuan, she would never give up the Jade Chamber. The Jade Chamber is only second? What's the most important thing to her, then? Why, Mora, of course. All Ningguang talked about was the Fatui this and the Fatui that. She said that after Rex Lapis was murdered, the Fatui have constantly been trying to sink their fingers into Liyue and that they aren't to be trusted. That is how the Fatui have always been. It doesn't surprise me in the least. Hmm. No matter what they may be planning, you must be careful when dealing with the Fatui. Always be on your guard. So, is there anything we need to get for the Rite of Parting in Diwa Marsh? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Today, we'll be gathering wild glaze lilies. Glaze lilies? But why did we come all the way out here? Doesn't the garden in Yujing Terrace have some? Even Qingsa Village has glaze lilies. Oh, right! Paimon remembers that Madame Ping is always tending to flowers. Maybe we could ask her. 
No. Those lilies have all been gardened by people. They won't do at all. Dihua Marsh used to be full of glazed lilies. It is a sort of joyful flower that listens to human song. Before the Archon War, Dihua Marsh was all dry land and fertile soil. But the war caused landslides, and the land was flooded, turning it into the marsh you see now. Nearly all the glazed lilies were wiped out. Of course, there are some kinds of flowers that have been preserved and gardened by people in the city. But very few people know that glazed lilies may still be found in the wild. Wild glazed lilies have the strongest fragrance. If we want to follow the true tradition of the rite of parting, we must grind up the wild lilies and place the powder in a censer of everlasting incense. But I'll need your assistance in gathering these flowers. <laughs> That's correct. Your singing will surely bring out the strongest fragrance from the flowers. Ah! So how good is your singing? Really? Why doesn't Paimon believe you? We'll only know once he starts singing. Whenever you're ready. Da 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 What happened? These flowers are jumping. They look really angry. Is it because you sang a song from on that they don't understand here in Leland? Terra Smash! <laughs> Those weren't glaze lilies. Glaze lilies wouldn't hit people. This little monster is known as a whopper flower. Hmm. Strange. These petals look interesting. The glaze lilies used as a disguise were buried with the whopper flower for too long. The result seems to have surprisingly potent medicinal value. Let's collect what we can of these petals. Well, that's nice and all, but will those petals be useful for the rite of parting? Unfortunately, no. Oh, that's so lame. Excuse me. Are you searching for glaze lilies? Oh, hey, it's... What's her face? I... Paimon can't remember. Hello, Traveler. I'm surprised you still remember my name. Ah, oh, that reminds me. How was your visit to the Jade Chamber? Well, it sure would have been better if you told us how to get up there. Didn't I tell you the way? Surely I did. Nope. We found the way on our own. Oh, I see. Uh-oh. I guess I really did forget to tell them. Huh. Something seems a little off about Ganyu. She's acting different from the first time we met. Where's her serious attitude now? Oh, well, I met you at that time as an emissary of the Tianchuan. But now, I am simply out on a stroll to see the flowers. You came all the way out here to see the flowers? Why not just enjoy the gardens of the city? <sighs> Yujing Terrace is where Rex Lapis parted from this world. If I strolled through those lonely gardens now, I wouldn't be able to bear it. Whenever my duties take me near Yujing Terrace these days, I draw the windows to block my view of the gardens. Oh, sorry. We shouldn't have brought it up. No, it's quite alright. I just haven't processed my emotions yet. 
When the Archon War came to its end 2,000 years ago, the first iteration of the Seven would gather in Liyue and drink with Rex Lapis. But five of those original Seven had already passed before Rex Lapis. It's truly a changing of the Guard. Yes. Now that the spirit of Rex Lapis has returned to the heavens, only Barbados of Mondstadt remains of the first seven. The other five, including Inazuma's Raiden Shogun, are no longer the same friends from 2,000 years ago. Of the current seven Archons, the youngest is Sumeru's god of Dendro. She is merely 500 years old, whereas Rex Lapis was more than 6,000 years old at the time of his passing. This means that Liyue had been under Rex Lapis's rule from the moment it was first founded 3,700 years ago. The city has never had to bid farewell to its deity. So what do you think of this... farewell? Huh? This... This is a little sudden, I... <sighs> As a mortal, I've never dared to imagine a Liyue without Rex Lapis. But as an Adeptus, I think I will eventually come to grips with reality. Since Rex Lapis has passed, the time of Liyue's contract with the gods and Adepti has now reached its end. Huh? Did you just say, as an Adeptus? Yes, I... I am a mix of human and Chilean. Adeptus blood flows through my veins. I fought for Rex Lapis and the city of Liyue during the Archon War. After the war ended, I signed a contract with Rex Lapis and took the position as secretary for the Chising. I've continued those duties to this very day. Well, uh... Let's save that conversation for another day. You say that you are here looking for glaze lilies? I also know where wild glaze lilies can be found. See, I've just picked one myself. Here, you may have it if you wish. <laughs> we dare not refuse it. Oh, so did you sing a song before you picked the lily? Indeed, I did. I know this tradition well. In fact, I sang a local Liyue ballad to it. Wow, so you really know your stuff, too. Thanks, Ganyu. No, it is you who I should be thanking. If not for this chance meeting, I never thought that I would be able to contribute to the upcoming farewell for our ancient lord. If you would excuse me, I should return to my work now. Good luck. And that just about does it. Our preparations for the rite of parting are mostly finished. Given the ease of picking glaze lilies, I think this was a fitting end to our tasks, in more ways than one. Yeah, Paimon can already imagine him starting a business in Liyue. <laughs> I've had enough ventures in my life already. Beginning a new undertaking is always difficult at first, and requires no small amount of effort. And once business is at full steam, the stress of it all only wears away at you over time. So you must be careful to take the time to step back and re-examine yourself. If left unchecked, the wear and tear on your heart may go well past mending. Wow. See? Jolly sounds like he's already seen it all. All right. I think it's about time we head back to Liyue Harbor now. Atmosphere is highly abnormal. It seems as though something big has happened. We should ask around a little, just to be safe. Ah, 
You're the consultant to Wongsheng Funeral Parlor. Mr. Zhongli, I presume. The Millilith are watching our every move now. These are desperate times. We mustn't act rashly. Desperate times? The Adepti of Joyun Karst are finally on the move. Do they intend to exercise force? Most likely. I've heard that some members of the Qixing have already gone to meet them. Well, I say meet, but it's more like they're attempting to stall the Adepti outside the city. However, both sides were quite obstinate and hit an impasse. It seems inevitable, given the current situation. The Adepti do not acknowledge the Qixing. They only acknowledge the contracts of the Geo Archon. If the two sides come to blows, Liyue Harbor will be in no position to stop them. Surely the Liyue Qixing are not the sort to give in so easily. <laughs> Their boneheadedness is known throughout the lands. Yet it's because of that obstinacy that mortals and Adepti are now on the verge of conflict. And what now? How is it that the Fatui have come under fire? Ah, <sighs> that's all Ningguang's doing. She proclaimed that in these tumultuous times, the Millilith must rein in the actions of the Fatui. Only now do they want to start keeping tabs on us? <laughs> that's the Qixing for you. Anyway, Mr. Zhongli, you're one of Child's close associates. Please understand that your actions will reflect on us. Don't let anyone catch you off guard. It looks like things are about to boil over in Liyue Harbor. Do you intend to use your neutral identity as an intermediary between both sides? Or will you use your sword to turn the balance? Neither path is an easy one. Oh, by the way, Mr. Zhongli, we've heard that the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor has also been caught up in all of this. They're currently squaring off with the authorities at the gates. Things are taking a turn for the worse. I'm afraid I must leave now to handle things back at Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. I hope that Master Hu has been able to keep things under control for the moment. Consider your next course of action carefully, Traveler. If you're trying to prevent an explosion, it may be wisest to look for the fuse first. <sighs> Having connections with the Fatui seems to be quite the double-edged sword. So what does Xiangli mean by looking for the fuse? Oh, Paimon gets it. If there's anyone that wants to see the whole city turned upside down, it's definitely him. He must be waiting for the moment when no one is watching to do something really bad. But where could we find him now? Where would he go at a time like this? The Liyue Qixing. To think that they'd go for us Fatui the first chance they got. Once the Adepti send the Qixing packing, we'll just set up foreign relations with them instead.
You've already fulfilled your task as guides, so why do you still linger here? Haven't you already seen enough trouble for today? Huh? Who's there? <sighs> if you were Fatui, I imagine that you would be entitled to a generous reward from the Tsaritsa herself. But now, you're nothing but dross, and you're in my way. <laughs> Although I'm deeply grateful to you that I was able to effortlessly find this secret location, don't you think that trying to stop me now would just be wasted effort? <laughs> Stopping the more immense, hiding away the Exuvia. <laughs> the Chising are really pulling out all the stops this time. So you've been planning to take the Gnosis from inside the Exuvia all along? <laughs> As one of the eleven Fatui Harbingers, it's my duty to see the will of the Tsaritsa fulfilled. She will get that which she desires. <laughs> I'm not asking for your blessing, and there's nothing you can do to stop me anyway. The time for discussion and diplomacy has already passed. I mean, if it were up to me, I would have skipped that stage to begin with. But I'm willing to do as the Tsaritsa deems fit. Either way, we now come to my favorite part. A simple pleasure, and one that I am oh so delighted to be sharing with you. The Battle. So you're the type that goes looking for trouble, huh? <laughs> you could say that. <sighs> when Signora offended the deities outside the cathedral in Mondstadt, she swiftly left the scene once her mission was accomplished. Instead of confronting you directly, she chose to rely on the snow and ice to make her escape. She wouldn't want the knights to come running towards the sound of battle now, would she? When she faces a worthy opponent, she will prioritize her mission weigh the outcomes, and consider the consequences of her actions. But as for me, the greatest pleasure of being a Harbinger lies in crossing blades with strong opponents. We won't let what happened in Monsta ever happen again! Oh, so you intend to fight me? Good. I won't kill you, Traveler. I'll just play along, to feel the thrill of battle. Besides, you could never defeat me. Not even in your wildest dreams. But hey, try to relish the fight anyway. Because if you ask me, without that, what else is there? <laughs> Fighting talk, I love it! Now let's see you live up to it. This chance is hard to come by. So show me all you've got! So very few ever get the chance to square off with a Fatui Harbinger. So come now, amuse me, and don't you dare disappoint! Yeah. Not bad, not bad. Poor time. Poor time, poor time. Try this. And away I go. Nice and spicy. Terror smash. You've made some progress. Passable effort. Passable effort. And away I go! A clear shot. Uh. Run all you like! Guess I should take you more seriously. Ha-ha! <laughs> Good! No wonder Senora was so wary of you. Well, that just means I can go all out. Brace yourself. This is about to get tough. Now, show me what you can do against the might of a Harbinger! Vengeance there! All you do is run! 
Swordsmanship is quite impressive. But that's about as far as you'll get. <laughs> Didn't think you had that card hidden up your sleeve. You were just playing it. Oh, quiet down. Stop acting like some wide-eyed recruit. You've seen this world. You of all people should know. This should have been expected. <laughs> well then, I'll be taking Morax's gnosis now. <laughs> I see. Well, this is most unexpected. You... You beat me to it, didn't you? <laughs> Well then, 
Time to cool off. It seems the burden of the foul legacy transformation was too great for my body. I lacked the opportunity to think this through. And now that I consider the matter more carefully, you never had any chance of beating me to the Gnosis. You had no connection to the Gnosis, no matter where it had been taken. That's what we've been trying to tell you! We didn't take it! Your show of ability today far surpasses that of Senora's initial assessment of you and Mondstadt. Tell me, how could that be? You already know the answer, don't you? I can see it in your eyes. But if that is a secret you wish to keep, I guess I'll just have to curb my curiosity. This battle has already left me satisfied. Anyone who strives as I do to grow stronger shall be called a friend, even if our friendship can only be shown in battle against one another. Pretty sure that's not the normal way to make friends. Unfortunately, I must bring this amiable conversation to an end. My quest still beckons. Given that the Gnosis wasn't taken by anyone, then we must look once again to the beginning. Perhaps it was never in the Exuvia to begin with. In fact, it might be that the Exuvia was just a diversion of sorts. What? So you mean that... Yes, it appears so. Interesting to say the least. It seems that the guardian deity of the capital of commerce is also well versed in little maneuvers beyond the boundaries of contracts. As such, we must now look to our backup plan. Backup plan? I had hoped it would never come to this, for the weak will be swept away in the process. The truth is, the world belongs to those who pursue strength. I seldom willingly involve myself with the weak. Unfortunately, we cannot be picky about our methods as Fatui Harbingers. Children must all learn to eat their vegetables sometime. So what are you planning to do? I will awaken the god that lies dormant beneath Guyan's stone forest. A god? Osile, overlord of the Vortex, who was defeated by Morax the Geo Archon in the Archon War and who has remained pinned beneath the waves by the Geo Archon's stone spears ever since. If such an ancient god were to be unleashed upon Liu Harbor, defenseless without the protection of its deity, do you think the cunning Rex Lapis would just stand aloof and watch the ensuing destruction? But the Archon War ended 2,000 years ago! How can an ancient god appear in a world now overseen by the Seven? Simple. I've already prepared the means to awaken it. Hey! Those are sigils of permission! Oh, Paimon remembers now! The Fatui have been researching them! Indeed. The one that was given to you was just a byproduct of our research. With the power of so many sigils of permission concentrated in one place, along with that which was bestowed upon me as a harbinger by our Tsaritsa, Breaking the subduing might of the Geo Archon Spears for a time should be no obstacle. Using the powers of ancient gods in such a situation fails to interest me, and is largely against my principles. But knowing that such an action will not only force the Geo Archon to show its hand, but you as well, that makes matters a little more intriguing. Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? If you wish to drown together with the people of Lyra, you're free to stay and enjoy the show. If we hadn't 
here just as we came out of the Golden House, we really wouldn't have known which way to go. <sighs> Did we make it in time? Is the Overlord of the Vortex still in the sea? It hasn't destroyed Leela yet, has it? What are you doing here? Huh? Hold on! It's the Adept Guy! What are you doing on the Jade Chamber? Paimon thought you were arguing with the Chi-Sing! Is the fighting over? Faced with a calamity of such magnitude, we have agreed to put our differences aside for now, and unite against this common enemy. <laughs> oh, Paimon gets it! So how do you plan to defend Leland? Eh, just seeing this Overlord of the Vortex guy puts a pit in Paimon's tummy! Even from all the way out here! It's not just you. We've got new Millilith recruits who can't even stand at attention without shaking. The force of an ancient god's presence seems to be too much for ordinary people to handle. Which is why we must stop that monster before it gets any closer to Liyue Harbor. So the Archon War was fought 2,000 years ago against enemies like that thing? Now that's scary. <sighs> so will the power of the Chi-Sing, Millilith, and Adepti gathered here be enough to stop that god? We've already discussed this together, and our conclusion is... not necessarily. What? What? All of you are supposed to be the Guardians of Lilith! Can't you think of something? One certainly could. Huh? The Chi Sing did once research the matter of the Guizhong Ballista when it piqued their fancy. And as fate would have it, one who did craft the Guizhong Ballista with one's own hands is here. For what could you mortals ever learn of Adepti mechanisms? Yet, it would take one, but a little tinkering to turn this Ballista into an engine of war beyond your wildest thoughts. <laughs> I suppose this is one blessing from the Adepti that we should be thankful for. So be it. We shall use the upgraded Guizhong Ballista to fight off that god. All the Adepti here can lend their strength to man it. We haven't a moment to spare. Our battle begins now. Yep. The three Adepti are manning the Guizhong Ballista. Do not let the Fatui disturb their work! All Abel Millilith, with me! Let's go help you! We Adepti have not faced a god in several millennia. Let one see what you are made of then. What strength remains within you, one wishes to witness. Joy, we've only just begun. <laughs> Looks like I hit too far. Shoot the kills. Let's move. Have a look at this. Cook this. Let's move. Yeah. Uh, I... Just kept... What is that? 
that is Osile's divine power. I am very familiar with it. Be careful not to get hit. The Fatui! Their attacks are unrelenting! <sighs> How daring. Snezhnai's diplomats will answer for this afterward. Every last one! Were you about to say we can't hold them, children? Take this! This is... Adeptal energy! That light from your body! It's like the time of Jillian Cars! Wow! It's Madame King's shockwave! This granny's really strong! No, you're not going anywhere! I'm it out of here! It's time to be a kill, Jillian! It only just began! Rosen! of adeptal energy at once. This will hurt a little. Please bear with us. Once you've adapted, try to use them in battle. There's nothing worse to come, right? The Fatui's numbers are 
spinning! Fight on, comrades! Once we finish this lot off, the Adepti will be able to deal with the god in peace! are no more. Now we may commit ourselves fully. Be careful now. The Guizhang Ballista is destroyed. Huh? Without its covering fire, retaliation shall be difficult. But the Jade Chamber is our last line of defense. We can't give another inch, no matter what. I have another idea. What do you mean, Lady Ningguang? I'll sacrifice the Jade Chamber. What is the meaning of this? I understand. Traveler, lend me a hand. Farewell, old friend. Goodbye for now. Let us meet again in the future. The ominous aura of that monster has indeed begun to fade. The effects of the Sigil of Permission last but a short time. It will be some time before the Overlord of the Vortex can make any waves again. We are indebted to you for your assistance. If the Adepti hadn't happened to be here, the future of Liyua Harbor would surely have been in great jeopardy. Save your flattery. We didn't just happen to be here. Surely you won't pretend to have forgotten the reason for which we came. Come now. There's no need for such harsh words, Cloud Retainer. I've heard that when Ningguang began learning to do business, she had already started setting aside part of her then limited income in preparation for building the Jade Chamber. At first, it was only the size of a small room. But with continued expansion, it has become the palace that lies before you now. It is a testament to Ningguang's entire life, both as a businesswoman and as the backbone of the Liyue Qixing. Seeing the Jade Chamber destroyed in the defense of Liyue means much to her. To me, such cooperation and sacrifice deserves at least some recognition, don't you agree? Well... I was really hoping you would say that such sacrifice could at least be used as some leverage in our negotiations. <laughs> Thank you all for hearing me out. We know very well why the Adepti came here today. But please forgive us. We cannot yield to your wishes. Oh? 3,700 years. According to our records, the Adepti signed a contract with Rex Lapis to protect Liyue 
3,700 years ago. Even to this very day, Liyue and its lands have stood the test of time, immovable as stone, just as it was thousands of years before. This is truly no small feat. But that does not mean that the Liyue of today is the same city as it was all those years ago. Do not merely cast your protective gaze upon the land. Instead, focus your sights on our city and each of the citizens that dwell within it. Are you questioning our means of protecting Liyue? Hmm... I mean no offense. I simply hope that our Adepti Forebearers would see Liyue in a new light. Ha! <laughs> Forebearers, you say? One doubts you would be fit to be part of such a lineage. This morning, Rex Lapis appeared to me in a dream. What? In the dream? I yearn to tell him that we Chi Sing, though mortal, are equally bound to the contract. Each passing generation of the Chi Sing leaves many things of value to be inherited by the next generation. I also thought to tell him how the past generations of Chi Sing had strove under his rule to survive in our mortal world, establishing a network of contracts which has since come to be known as trade. But I dared not speak. I could only gaze at him in silence until the moment I awoke. Oh, Ningguang! Yet another perspective. What are you trying to say, Outlander? Right! That's something that happened in Monster. It's a story about the Four Winds and the people of the Animal Archon. The Animal Archon sought to quell the strife between the two sides, because he believed that such conflict would only scar the hearts of both, and that nothing good would come of it. Each of the Seven Nations has its own scars from the past. Though your point is the very height of simplicity, as Adepti we've become a laughingstock, to be chastised thus by an outlander who has lent us such succor. All right, all right. Didn't Ning Wong suggest that we should focus on the city and each of its citizens? I know I already have, so why not see for yourselves? I apologize for appearing in full armor. I am afraid I cannot show the proper courtesies. And who are you? I am Feng Yan. A sergeant of the Millilith. I have come to extend my thanks to the Adepti. I thought this battle would perhaps be my last. But thanks to the aid of the Adepti, our forces were not as badly battered as I feared we might be. Although I am a mere mortal soldier, I promise to hold the line and never betray the grace given to us by the illuminated Adepti this day. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so down. Didn't we just beat that big monster? <laughs> Weren't you frightened, dear? It was quite the predicament. I wasn't afraid. All the strong Millilith guards were there, and those powerful heroes with their visions were there. Everyone was there. When danger is near, everyone always protects me. And the rest of the time, they make fun toys and tasty snacks and, and loads of things that make the harbor so pretty. Thanks for protecting Liyue Harbor. Please come visit us for the next Lantern Rite. Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to participate. Huh? Because we are Adepti. It must be hard being an Adeptus. Aww. You see, this is what Liyue is like today. The country of contracts is grateful to the Adepti for their protection. But it is no longer necessary for the city to rely on the Adepti's power to solve every little niggling matter. Although their blood is weak, there is still strength to be found in those we call mortals. 
The time of contracts between gods and Liyue has long since passed. Now is the time of contracts between Liyue and its people. Hmm. Seeing the port around us now, it is hard not to feel a bit out of place. Wouldn't you say so, Cloud Retainer? Your line of inquiry is askew. One did not spearhead this expedition to Liyue Harbor. Hmm. Seems like the Adepti have had a change of heart. Let us return now. Eager to leave, conqueror of demons. <laughs> yes, one understands what the conqueror of demons means. The city of Liyue has changed much after our long separation. One fears that by the time one finally grasps the new contracts of Liyue, you humans would have once again changed the place beyond recognition. Fair enough. Away we shall and return whence we came. Hmm. Since we Adepti have consensus, then one shall persist no further. But how will we ensure that the Liyue Chising will not simply exploit their power once we depart? In my view, that is still a thing to be guarded against. <laughs> All right, Mooncarver, you needn't worry. It seems to me that this right of supervision is best left to the people of Liyue. <sighs> Looks like the conflict between humans and Adepti was avoided. All swell it ends well, huh? All right! It's nice that we've got peace and all, but we're forgetting one thing. Child wanted to unleash the god so he could lure Rex Lapis out. But we were able to handle the Overlord of the Vortex on our own. So Rex Lapis never showed up. Oh, and speaking of that, don't we still need to get to the bottom of that Archon's death too? Hyman doesn't get it. But isn't the strongest lead we have the Adeptilus Rite of Parting that we're organizing? No idea where Zhang Li's going. Let's ask for him at Wang Shen Funeral Parlor. Is there anything I can do for you two? I'm afraid that Wangsheng Funeral Parlor isn't in the best state to receive guests. We've come to see Zhang Li. Could you please tell him we're here? Unfortunately, Zhang Li isn't here at the moment. It seems he went to Northland Bank. Doesn't the Northland Bank belong to the Fatui? Last time we saw Zhang Li was before we went to the Golden House. Do you think he doesn't know about the attack on Liyue? Visiting the Fatui at a time like this could only mean more trouble. We had better go and make sure that everything is okay. Come to think of it, I wonder what business Mr. Zhongli has at the Northland Bank. He didn't tell me either. You call this cooperation between Harbingers? Cooperation involves communication, you know. <laughs> Don't take it to heart, child. Besides, aren't you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Oh, it seems that some of your friends have arrived. Hey, it's Zhang Li and Child, and... You! You're also one of the Harbingers? <laughs> it's you two. I believe we've met once before. In the city of Bards, was it? I'm glad you still remember my name. Ah, right. I imagine that it must have been rather hard to forget watching helplessly as something precious was snatched away from your friend. No! 
don't let her get to you. You've yet to gather the powers of all seven elements. And our last battle at the Golden House was almost more than you could handle. So it might be best to keep things peaceful this time, seeing that two of the Harbingers are here. Well, if it isn't you two. This is our first time seeing each other since Liyue was nearly wiped off the map. This is certainly a bit... awkward, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Paimon knew that we should never have trusted a Fatui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Except for that little tussle we had at the end. <laughs> Nothing personal. We just have different views, that's all. Of course, you may very well hold this against me, but that's up to you. The real deceivers here are Senora and Zhang Li. Curse them for leading me on. So actually, I think. Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. The Gnosis, please. What in the world are you talking about? <sighs> the contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. For my promise is solid as stone. Sanctimonious. What? So you're the Lord of Chia? No, wait. That's an exciting twist and all, but why give the Gnosis to the Fatui? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract, for it is a matter solely between the Tsaritsa and I. forces that had been bubbling behind the scenes, and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. That's what he wanted to see, am I right? Wait, what? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. It is now 3,700 years ago that I founded Liu together with the Adepti. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. I kept convincing myself that cracks had not begun to form, and that the end of my time had not yet come. Until one drizzly day, as I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers, You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, Have I already finished my duties? Oh, Zhang Li. But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, I soon discovered that many reasons still remained to not hastily depart. Was Liyue, the city I had dwelt in for so long, already prepared to enter its next age? I decided that a test was needed in order to reveal the answer. So I feigned my own death, and gathered the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Liu Chising to play their roles together on the stage that was Liu. That's right, which is why I continued to safeguard the Gnosis until now. So you mean that if the Chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Lila back under control? Of course, and it would have been all too easy for him too. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so has Liyu matured when faced with the death of its deity. 
In the end, the resolution to all that has transpired was even more satisfactory than I could have hoped for. Take the Adepti, for instance. Owing to their years of seclusion, they were the least informed. Yet when faced with a crisis, they commendably showed the greatest amount of restraint possible. Not only did they manage to cooperate with the Qixing, but in the end, they even made efforts to understand the hearts of the people. Credit is also due to Signora, the emissary dispatched by the Cryo Archon to fulfill our contract. At my request, she kept everything she knew in strict confidence. This despite the eavesdropping ears of her colleague, Child. This meant I could remain as Zhongli, even having the chance to fulfill the age-old traditions of Liu in this mortal form. Thank you for joining me on this journey, Traveler. All of these things turned out as I had planned. There is only one thing that I had not anticipated, and that was the conduct of the Liu Qixing. I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti, to come to the defense of Liu. But when all was said and done, they seized the opportunity to supplant Liu as divine protectors, and used the subsequent power vacuum left by my death to quickly gain complete control of Liu. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all! Ha! <laughs> On the contrary, I think it is excellent. I had always feared that it was too soon for them to take over from me. And it was also that which I longed for the most. As such, this is the best parting gift anyone could have given this god of old. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You've practically kept me in the dark! <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance, if anything. If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, a Depti, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Archon, Liu, would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of a city. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? Are you itching for a fight? Be that as it may, you've come out of this as the hero of Liu. I, on the other hand, will be forever prescribed as a disturber of the peace, no? <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. We should return to Zapolyarni Palace and seek an audience with Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. Come, child. Ah, fine. I'll meet you there later. I'm not sharing a boat with the likes of you. <laughs> Do as you wish. Now then, is there anything else you wish to ask me? Right! As Zhongli always told us, a good trade is a fair trade. Paimon has no idea what could be a good trade for a Gnosis. Realistically speaking, there is no such thing. Huh? However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. If the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. One of the clauses of our contract was not to divulge any of its contents. Ugh, you're so petty. Today's the day of the 
rite of parting. Although the star of the show is fake, we spent so much time trying to organize it, it would be a real shame not to go there now. Well, since we're going through with this rite of parting, I guess it means that those rumors hit the nail on the head. So Rex Lapis is really... <sighs> but they didn't catch the culprit, did they? Oh, come on. Do you think that the assassin could have been a normal person? You know what I think. I don't think any of the gossip on the streets you hear from those shady types is worth anything. There's only one real possibility in my mind. I've heard that the assassin was that Fatui fellow. Youngish, pretty high in rank. I think they called him child. Fatui? Hmm. They certainly are very suspicious. Who knows what those greedy, crooked folks... Shh! Lower your voice. If the Fatui catch you in their sights, Rex Lapis won't be around to protect you this time. You know that god from the ocean couldn't have just shown up out of nowhere. I mean, it's been 2,000 years since Rex Lapis subdued it. Yes, and to think that this happened right on the heels of the incident with Rex Lapis, too. Say, do you think the person who assassinated our lord and released that evil god might have been one and the same? Now that you mention it, that's very possible. Yes, it's very possible indeed. I mean, it all fits together. That person must have colluded with the evil god to harm Rex Lapis. Oh, that wicked, black-hearted scoundrel. Still, what sort of supernatural prowess must this person possess to be able to do such things? I have never heard of such a person in all my years. Ah, forget it. Guessing's no use to us. Look, the Millilith over there looks like he's about to make an announcement. Let's hear what the Ministry of Civil Affairs has to say first. Hear ye all! The Chi Sing's words. Though a dragon soars ageless as the mountains, it, too, must return to dust. This is common knowledge. Gods and Adepti live glorious lives, but both light and shadow have their season. So, too, must they face divinely appointed trials. Rumors and hearsay abound on the streets that Rex Lapis was murdered. Now, let the truth be revealed. Having been thwarted in his trial, Rex Lapis's soul has recouped the celestial heights. He beseeches the people of Lyra to grieve not and to let not their hearts be saddened. Nor are they to believe street-born rumors or indulge in baseless speculation. Translation on what the Chi Sing's announcement said. <sighs> so that's how they're spinning it. Something feels off. Why would they suddenly give up looking for the murderer? Not to mention how this excuse sounds like something they just made up on the spot. Could the Chi Sing already have known that Rex Lapis wasn't dead? But Zhang Li said that neither they nor the Adepti knew anything. Hmm. Did Zhang Li tell them in secret after his Gnosis changed hands? Exactly, right? Ooh, seems like the Rite of Parting has been going on for a while now. Let's go have a look. Look, it's Ningguang and Kuching! 
Are they saying something? Are their speeches over? As said previously, Rex Lapis's soul returning to the heavens is the end of the contract. And it is also the end of an era. 3,700 years of contracts burnt and reduced to ash. We, the people of Liyue, were indeed prosperous. But blinded by our prosperity, we forgot that time can be pitiless. The long, unending dream of our Archon walking among us. Hmm. Now that we have awoken from our dream, we must learn to say farewell. Will you stand with us as we re-establish our contracts? As we build a new age of prosperity? So concludes the words of Her Eminence the Tianquan. Does Her Eminence the Yuhang have anything to add? Is she looking this way? Traveler. Yikes! She really is looking our way! Is that the Traveler who they say defeated the ancient god? So young! The Liyue Qixing always repay their debts. And as you have heard, our eyes see far and our reach is long. Name your price. You deserve that much. Whoa! Well, could you help me put up some missing person posters? Huh. And to think I'd put my best perfume on before coming here thinking you'd like it. But it seems as if those perfumes really were meant to be offered to Rex Lapis. Well, that's fine. Suffer no rivals in love, they say. And that's three gone in one stroke. <laughs> As for the mortals and Adepti of Liyue, what shape shall our relationship take from now on? Ah, Rex Lapis, oh, Rex Lapis. Hmm, now that I think about it, if everyone's of the same mind as me, Perhaps mementos for Rex Lapis might be the best short-term business opportunity. Roping you in was possibly the most masterful move we could have made. I believe that future generations will say so too when our deeds come up for their review. The cleanup of the premises, managing the crowds as they exit, making an account of the right? There's much that remains to be done. I didn't miss anything, did I? <laughs> Why, you? Were you just trying to look cool earlier, or are you really that selfless? If you were looking for someone, you could have just told me that in private. Thinking that they'll never see Rex Lapis again. And here you are looking all relaxed. <laughs> Why would I not feel more at ease after laying down the burden I have borne for 3,700 years? Right. If the two of you can spare the time, 
I should treat you to a meal at the Shinya kiosk. <laughs> that sounds like big talk, Zhongli. Paima might have believed you if you were treating us to some third round knockout, but you'd have to pay out your nose just to stand inside Shinya kiosk. Are you sure you can afford it? Hmm... You're right. <laughs> I do like the Mora. As the Rex Lapis Morax, I can easily create Mora. But since I have chosen to walk this earth as the mortal Zhongli, I should abide by the same rules that mortals do. When I was journeying with you, though I still had the Gnosis in hand, I knew that I must soon retire from my role as an Archon, so I had to... rehearse a little for my new life. Oh, no wonder! Paimon gets it now. You didn't look at the price tags when we were spending because you've never had to. But since you weren't used to not being able to just make more Mora as and when you wanted to, you had to try becoming a parasite to society who lives off of other people's credit. Well, we were only spending Fatui money. You don't have to say it like that. In the City of Commerce, we do not merely exchange money or goods. We also exchange knowledge, memories, and foresight as well as positions, roles, and lives. The Archon Morax could never experience life as the true mortal Zhongli could, no matter how many times he descended to be with his people. <laughs> I must thank you for that. I will treasure the memories that I made as Zhongli, traveling the streets of Liyue with you. That is true. But there is no journey that does not end. No meetings without partings. Hmm. Paimon thinks that we should make a move and continue our search for the Seven. I fear that continuing your journey may be difficult. The nation that neighbors Liyue by sea in Azuma is presently closed. The Electro Archon Ball. And just as the people of Liyue preferred to call me Rex Lapis, she too goes by another name among locals in Inazuma. Um, Paimon thinks we've heard that one before. Uh, right, Raiden? That is the case. And since Raiden is also the Shogun of Inazuma, people call her the Raiden Shogun. That said, though people at the wharf were saying that the situation in Inazuma is very tense, Paimon doesn't remember that always being the case. It wasn't that bad last year. Zhongli, since you're Rex Lapis, shouldn't you know something about what's happening there? Just how did Inazuma become a closed nation? It's because of visions. Visions? When faced with circumstances beyond their control, humans often bemoan their lack of power. But if a person shows true strength of will at a desperate and fateful moment in their life, the gods will look upon them with favor. This is what visions are. Magical foci bestowed upon those who have been acknowledged by the gods. Uh-huh. That's how people in Tevat see it. But starting from last year, the Raiden Shogun began promulgating the Vision Hunt Decree. Vision Hunt Decree? Yes. It was an order to seize all visions within Inazuma's borders, and to inlay them upon the hands of the statue of the Omnipresent God. They want to seize visions? But why? Aren't visions blessings from the gods? I should think that in the Raiden Shogun's eyes, it is precisely because they are divine blessings that they should be under the sole dominion of divinity. Whoa, that's harsh. The Animo Archon is the god of freedom, and the Geo Archon is the god of contracts. For her part, the Raiden Shogun is the god of eternity. It seems as though she has finally decided to eliminate any unstable elements that could pose a threat to her eternal realm. 
the fact that even I, the oldest of the seven, have now passed away, will only strengthen her resolve to pursue eternity. Knowing her, she must have again quoted that adage she is most fond of when proclaiming that decree to her people. Seven ideals for seven gods. And of these, eternity is nearest unto the heavenly principles. All right then. Was there anything else you wished to know? <laughs> ah, that was a good one. Failing a divine trial. How they came up with that excuse, I will never know. That said, the reason why the Chi Sing were so eager to resolve the incident and stop pursuing the culprit was indeed because they received news in secret that Rex Lapis was not dead. I hinted as much to the Adepti as well. How did I accomplish that, you ask? Hmm. Uh, have you ever heard of this particularly convenient Adepti art known as gifting dreams and visions? All right then. Was there anything else you wished to know? Yeah, about that. Before the Cheesing made their announcement, we listened to a lot of people talking on the way. Most of them put the blame for everything on Child. These are indeed false accusations. But it remains undeniably true that Child did send people to the Jade Chamber to prevent the Adepti and the Cheesing from defeating the Ancient God. I've heard that Ningguang is busy milking that for all it's worth on the foreign relations front at the moment, browbeating the envoys of the Fatui. Ha! <sighs> Those poor Snezhnayan diplomats. If it were not for Child's exalted position as a harbinger, I'm certain that they would have shifted all the blame to him and called for his dismissal by now. All right then. Was there anything else you wished to know? The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liu Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liu? Kuching is absolutely right in saying this. Now, though I did laud Ningguang's desire for power, believing this to be a good thing, and thought as a matter of course that she must have been behind the Qixing's plan to take governing power over Liu from the hands of the gods and Adepti, could the original person who brought up the idea of seizing power have been... Hmm... All right then. Was there anything else you wished to know? That's right! Zhang Li, now that you don't have your Gnosis, what's going to happen to all the more into that? Since Morax is dead, are they all just gonna disappear? Also, isn't the Golden House the only mint in the entire continent? Will it even continue to work? The Mora present now will not vanish. But the Golden House will indeed have to cease operations for a lengthy period of time, since creating Mora requires the use of the Geo Archon's power. <sighs> this is terrible! We're all about to run out of Mora! The world is coming to an end! Yes. This is indeed a major issue from a financial standpoint. Uh, well, I suppose we'll just leave such troublesome matters to the Liu Qixing to debate. Then, did you at least set some private funds aside for yourself? Oh, a private fund. Hmm. This does seem like a good logical common sense idea. <sighs> it's a shame. What's a shame? It's a shame that I didn't think of it at the time. All right then. Was there anything else you wished to know? Well then. I suppose you'll have to find a way to get inside this closed nation. Have patience. I suspect that some serendipity must first come into play.